Now, I, I know it's probably contentious, but I still strongly believe that if you butter a piece of bread and then glue it to the back of a cat, oh, here we go again. It'll never hit the ground. It's just going to rotate infinitely in the air. Have you tested this? I mean, Bunny's a really heavy cat. I, I'm not sure scientifically why, speaking. I'd have to have a really big piece of bread. When you could use duct tape. Oh, because duct tape, when you remove it, it's going to tear off all the hair. Same with the glue. Waxing. Yeah, but that only needs one point of contact. The tape, you'd have to like wrap it around. And then there's the whole the whole strip at the midsection has just been deferred. And that's just awful. Does it matter Hello, what everybody. Kind of Welcome to the Implausible Science Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very plausible. I'm plausing right now. This feels so weird for me right now. I'm like, <laughs> it's Wednesday and I don't have like Connor making like burp noises and Zito's and, oh. you know. See, I should have, I should have downloaded voice mod and got no the, you the, shouldn't the have. distortion Things devil fart pack who, <laughs> setting up uh, you, if we resumed if we assumed the the roles of the other characters who is oh who? god <laughs> <laughs> listen i don't want to give bosco to anybody i was just gonna say <laughs> i don't think i can do that to my mic <laughs> <laughs> hello, no one everybody. here likes sports enough so everybody hello welcome to Welcome to the Unexpectables. Uh, this is the first of seven uh, finale one shots featuring uh, our returning guest star of Mark Allen Jr. and three new individuals who have come in. Um, we will go through intros right now. Uh, so starting with our returning uh, guest star, Mark, where can people find you? Hello. Yes, I am Mark Allen Jr. You can find me on Twitter at Mark Allen Jr., here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming, or you can follow the adventures of my fat, currently non-buttered cat bunny on Instagram at chonk for life Please pay attention to my Twitter. I have a really big announcement next week, but I can't talk about it yet. But next week, please, it'll be great. Also, uh, watch My Senpai is Annoying. I play uh, Kazuma in that show. If you like animes, check it out. Yeah, that's it. Happy to be back. Yeah, welcome back. And new-ish to the channel, but not to like the channel channel, but to this, uh, Colonel Cheru, where can people find you? Hi, I'm Colonel Cheru. You can find me at Colonel Cheru on Twitch and Twitter, as well as YouTube and TikTok, you know, wherever. It's the same handle throughout, throughout. Um, I am a Space Dragon VTuber. So if you're interested in VTubing, uh, I specialize in that. I play a variety of games. Uh, specifically, I'm doing Danganronpa playthrough with a bunch of my friends where we live dub the show, and that's on Mondays. Um, as well as I play D&D as well on Thursdays over on my own channel called The Shadows We Cast. It's so. <laughs> an ominous Hell laughter. Yeah. Honored to be back. Let's just say that. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been um, a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Oh my it's God. It's been a while. Zito crew is spamming the the chat with the is that a raccoon i don't even know i don't i, I think it's a pug <laughs> i don't know uh speaking of maniacal laughter in the distance uh willy the willy boo where can people find you welcome <laughs> you can find the willy boo at the willy boo fun posting online and having a good time uh more often than not i am fun posting over on twitter at the willy boo or you can find me over on DMs Guild, putting out a variety of different D&D 5e options. Or over on Arcadia Magazine thing. Uh, I, I have a couple of articles on there too, including one coming out next month. Uh, but that's usually where you can find me. Oh, and also on Thursdays over at Colonel Cheru's channel, I am the DM of The Shadows We Cast. There we go. That's everything. Okay. And last but certainly not least, we have Zan. I don't know if there's a longer form to your name, but I'm going to call you Zan. Zan is solid. perfectly fine. Uh, Perfect. You can find me on Twitter on, at, at Zanny Grimm uh, if you want to find me uh, as well. There's a ritual that you can cast with three pizzas and two glasses of wine to summon me, but the composition of the wine and pizza is still a secret. Ooh. I've been Get trying on to it, that data miners. That sounds like a good night. For somebody. All right. uh, and of course, I'm 
I'm Monty Glue. I'm the DM of the Unexpectables, and you guys can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter and twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Uh, tomorrow will hopefully be more Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Unfortunately, people are busy and stressed and have a lot of things going on, so there is maybe a chance of cancellation, but we're hoping to get back into it. The players have to fight a beholder, and that's fun. Uh, yeah. We're playing the module as written with like little to no homebrew. Um, trying out some rules, trying out carrying capacity. It's actually going really great, and I'm really enjoying myself. Um, and then on Sunday, I have no idea. I beat Pokemon Diamond. I quit my Nuzlocke and just beat the game. And holy, holy shit, that game is hard. The uh, the the Cynthia fight is a, a, an extra level of difficult yeah. now. <laughs> like almost like offensively, um, offensively difficult. <laughs> Can we, can we talk spoilers about what happened on your stream? Sure, absolutely. Go for it. Freaking one HP hero. Yeah, Soul team. Suplex, my Machamp, who came out of retirement after beating the fighting gym. I trained my Machamp, uh, Soul Suplex, up, and Soul Suplex saved the goddamn day. I would have been swept if, if Soul Suplex didn't incredible. survive. That was incredible. Soul Suplex is the MVP. Um, but yeah, this coming Sunday, I don't know. Uh, probably maybe party games with friends, something like that. I don't know. But probably in a stream with other people, but it's it's here or there. It's going to be very improvised. But more importantly, we're here for D&D. &D. And even more impressively, I don't have Connor or Bosco here. So I have to do the bits and subs today. So I hope you guys are ready for Rap God Monty, because I'm going to try my best. You're, you're hit your what? record buttons now, everybody. I can't wait to say everybody's name incorrectly, and I'm very sorry <laughs> if I do. Uh, Konecki Duog, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Uh, Shadaw the Rampage, thank you so much for the resubscription for Tier 1 to 17 months. It's been a long ride. I wasn't missing this tonight. Let's go save Alabas. Antelirius, uh, thank you for rating with a party of one. Tazuto, uh, thank, you for, uh, thank you for resubbing with the Tier 1 sub for 12 months. Good luck, Seika. Punch those sun zealots into oblivion. Thanks to probably not tamer for my gift sub. Uh, like Tabuya, uh, thank you for the 100 bits, the beginning of the end. Greasy X Spoon, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 22 months. Spizzy Pretzel, thank you so much for 100 bids. Why not both? Uh, Umbertastic, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 17 months. Let's go! Free Haircut and Lobotomy, thank you so much for the tier one sub for five months. One Shot Marathon, hell yes! Rollwolf in a Speedo, thank you so much for 100 bits. I'm sorry, but the title Seika Strike Force makes you think of a 90s comic or Saturday morning cartoon. That was the point. Hey, real quick, Monty. Uh-huh. Not not to, like, pull the wind out of your sails, but there's something very important that you forgot. What did I forget? Um, it has something to do with... Oh! Uh... oh, my God. How could I forget? Yeah, my there beloved. it is. Die Hard Dice. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have to do that, too. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Um, oh, gosh. I'm so nervous now. Diana's watching. Um, <laughs> hey, guys. This. Do you like dice? Do you like polyhedrals and things that have numbers on them that make your funny barbarian go brrr? Uh, check out dieharddice.com where you can Die get Hard beautiful... Die. Yeah, you can get beautiful metal and and like plastic dice of beautiful color and craftsmanship. I'm very sorry. This I I I I'm so used to Connor doing this, and I feel like you know he does such a good job. Um, currently, if you would like to, you may use our code the uh, Unexpectables exclamation mark to I believe get 10% off as a discount if you buy Die Hard Dice. Um, so please check them out. They've been a sponsor of the show. They've been incredibly supportive of our projects and making sure that Austin gets to eat, which is always good. So please check them out and please check out their dice. They are very good and I love them and I need more. I don't have a problem. Shut up. And their dice accessories as well. Yeah, I'm using my dice tray. I'm using my magnetic dice tray today. I was using the dice scroll, which you have actually. I don't do, you? and I love it's, it. It's so nice. Yeah. Do you have the map one or the dragon one? I have the dragon one. I have the map one. Yeah, the map one's yeah. nice, too. They're very, very nice. Oh, yeah. The, the art is beautiful. And the nice thing is they credit their artists, too, which is really mm -hmm. good as well. Mm -hmm. They're very, very good about that. Anyway, back to bits and subs. Uh, <clears throat> Greckles' flowery nips. Thank you so much for the tier <laughs> one sub for 10 months. Such a bittersweet feeling of this next couple of sessions. I love you guys. Love you, too. Al Robot, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 14 months. Tears of Mozart, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 19 months. 19 months. I cannot believe the campaign is near its end. 
I make things up. Thank you so much for the tier one sub for 22 months. Here we fucking go. Thanks for the 22 months. Good luck, everybody. Fantastic Callum with 100 bits. Seika's back. Yeah. Also, don't worry, Mark. If your luck is anything like it was for that Mewtwo, you'll take care of this. No problem. And yeah, Dark my luck Cooley. failed after the Mewtwo. <laughs> and Dark Cooley, thank you so much for the tier one sub for nine months in a row. You're a baby. Thank you to probably not Tamer for my gift sub. And Great Otaku Bomb, uh, thank you for the tier one sub for 16 months. Also a gift sub courtesy of probably not Tamer. Flustered Bun, thank you so much for 100 bits. Uh, go Seika, no one die. I'll come for you if you do. Salute. Q Shark, thank you so much for 100 bits. I don't. I know the game hasn't even started yet, but since we know it's a Seika episode, how about this for a title? Rekindled Flame. Ooh. It's a romantic title. It is. CMDR Solus, thank you so much for the resubscription for Tier 1 sub for 22 months in a row. Thank you so much. Uh, Dragon's Drag Drag Dragon's Son. I, your name Your name has Your name has Leet speak in it, and I don't speak fluent Leet speak. Uh, thank you for two hundred fifty five beats. Yo, they're deep. Werewolf in a speedo. Thank you so much for hundred bits. Time for a good old fashioned <laughs> flaming hot fist. Blackfoot ferret. Thanks for five hundred bits. Let's do this. Umber tastic. Thank you for hundred bits. Take my bits. Roll twenty and give Mark good rolls. That seemed to work when people gave bits for you to get good rolls. You did actually sometimes get good rolls. I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you. <laughs> uh, pseudonym Mick fake name. Thank you so much for a hundred bits. Are we gonna get legally distinct Mark Allen Jr. halftime show? Possibly. Cosmosis forty five. Thank you so much for a hundred bits. Go for it, guess you can do this. Combine the elements and summon Captain Mark Material Plane. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> By your powers combined. I. Uh, I it was the heart anything. elemental. VD's uh, VD <laughs> Sora 32. They gave such a tier one sub for 11 months. I'm excited for these one shots. Once again, they gave for probably not Tamer for the gift sub. Gave me such a wonderful year's worth of enjoyment. Uh, 321 Agimo has resubscribed for 22 months. Good yuck. Good, good, good yuck, y'all. Good luck, y'all. <laughs> sorry. Infinite Kitty for the uh, tier one sub for 21 months. I'm sorry, Connor's not here, but you know what? 21. 21. I have reached the I have reached the enlightened month of 21. The spoon has resub <laughs> for Don't make fun of me. I'm trying my best. No, Tier one's up for 12 months, a whole year. It's been 14 months back on my feet without working full time and taking a semester off from school. Thank you for keeping me sane. I cannot wait to see Good Boy Seika once again. The Narga Kuka Tamer, thank you so much for the 500 bits. I make things up, thank you so much for the 400 bits. Seika's back, let's fucking go. Shadowy Sphinx, thank you for the tier one sub. The PK Awesome, uh, thank you for resubbing for 20 months. Home Stretch Start has been a long road and has been an honor to witness it. Here's hoping for the best, looking at you, Seika. Thortron 6000, thank you so much for the 1100 bits. I'm, I'm re-watching the entire Unexpectable series to celebrate it ending. I'm currently on the episode 13, The Hungry Boys. They were so hungry. Uh, Tesla B Monkey, thank you for gifting five tier one subs. Heretical Cryptid, thank you so much for 100 bits. Uh, Werewolf in the Speedo, thank you for another additional 100 bits. Nobody expect the elementals. Norvic Norviticus, Norviticus, thank you so much for the 250 bits. Hello, Unexpect the Fam. Hello. SSGT Tucker, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 19 months. Nervous about bits and subs money? You shouldn't be. You should be. Drop the puns. I don't, don't do that to me. Dr. Caliban, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 11 months. QB Lol, thank you so much for the 500 bits. Got surgery in the morning. Here's some good luck bits. Catch y'all on YouTube. Take care, and I hope you feel better soon. Just Neelan, thank you so much for the 300 bits. Be careful, everyone. Comma, if you don't play this game right, the main cast will get the UFO ending. <laughs> the best ending. <laughs> yeah, I hear I it's like, very I, entertaining. I'm personally a fan of the dog ending <laughs> myself. Bubba Bob, 145, thank you so much for the 500 bits. Seika, flush out those damn raccoons. <laughs> Tesla B Monkey, thank you so much for the resub for 17 months. At last, I catch you guys live after a month of mis after months of misery. Oh, I hope you feel better soon. Deluna 13, thank you so much for tier one sub for 20 months. Hey Mani, Proa Pass. Hey Deluna, uh, you're I'm gonna uh, someone ban Deluna. I'm just joking, don't actually do it. But Proba <laughs> we don't stand Proba Pass in this channel anywhere. Proba Pass what? is a waste of Pro fuck Proba Pass. What about Nose no Pass? Nose Pass is on thin ice. Proba Pass is, has broken it and is in the fucking abyssal trench. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Magic Ninja Go, I, I, your whole name is very, very long. I'm very sorry. Whoa, the stream just showed up on my follow channels, and then the intro is already happening four minutes in. Yeah. Mengetsu Tatsumasa, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Remember, Seika, peace was never an option. 
Ghosts of Sparta, 45. Thank you so much for the tier one sub for 14 months. It's been a fun ride. Kind of sad to know that the end is here. I'm glad to have the unexpected part of my life. Hell yeah. Vulcan DDDDD, thank you so much for 100 bits. Despite their best efforts, the army of Periton will fall to the cult of Provo Pass. No, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> Arlo 281, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Uh, Riotous Frog, thank you so much for the 500 bits. Elementals, assemble! Shadowy Sphinx, thank you so much for the 1,000 bits. Haven't been able to catch live in a while and can't catch the session due to trying to catch them on good luck and may Mark roll a natural 20, like once. That would be cool. Yeah, just one. That's all I need. Uh, level 1 Eevee with 200 bits. Stinky. <laughs> we know you are, yes. You don't have to announce it, okay? Uh, Zeno with 100 bits. Don't forget our sponsor money. Yes, Die Hard Dice, where you can buy dice and dice accessories. <laughs> Please don't order dice nice and then say I forgot to, to, to do the the, the, the the thing, please. Uh True Lord Darkness, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub for 15 months. Magic Ninja Go, thank you so much for 100 bits. Who the heck are all these people? Twitch didn't let me hear. I'm sorry. They're strangers, and I don't know how they got in my house. The Goblet of Unmaking, or Fun Making, sorry. Uh, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 22 months. Uh Yo, this is going to be an interesting session here since... Uh, here we are near the fa finale of The Unexpectables. Been here since episode one, and I'm proud that I managed to maintain a schedule in order to watch this each week. Hope you guys have a good one shot, guys. Hell yeah. River Rat with 100 bits. Death to Probe Pass. That's a thing I can get behind. Brian wow. Merrill. Thank you so much for the 50 bits. Uh, White Fang, 90818. Sorry. 100 bits. Uh, Draconian 9. Thank you so much for the 100 bits. Uh, Found You in My Pants has resubscribed <laughs> with zero and sub for 10 months. Take the pants, Saka. <laughs> What? Take, take oh, they sorry. pants, Saka. That's what it says. Okay. Zenlina, thank you so much for the 300 bits. Monty forgets the sponsorship. Suddenly we hear Diana through a walkie-talkie. Take the shot. <laughs> no! Take the shot. <laughs> Defang Shadow, thank you so much for the tier one sub for five months. Gudrun, thank you so much for the uh, tier one sub for 22 months. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to just read off the subs. I will no longer be able to read off the uh, comments, but we love you guys. I'm going to read these all off as fast as I can. I'm not as good as Connor. I'm very sorry. Okay, Gudrun, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 22 months. Miss Tweedums, thank you for uh, thank you for gifting a sub to Zito. Sword Fanatic, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 11 months. Nerdy Gamer Incorporated, thank you for resubbing with a Prime for 13 months. Kajel to third, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 15 months. I am Spite, thank you so much for the bits. Uh, Derpy Doogie, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 22 months. Glacerius, thank you for resubbing for uh, for 22 months. Thank you so so much. Uh, Oathbreaker John, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Sergeant Tucker, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Dill357, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub for 16 months. Like Tabuya, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Karen Solis, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 16 months. Brian Merrill, I'm gonna get winded. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Brian Merrill, thank you so much for the 50 bits. Chocolate Zombie 101, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 17 months. Magic Go 10, thank you so much for the uh, 100 bits. Edward Bosco, gifting a tier one sub to Confan, thank you so much. Matt Chur, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 22 months. Glacerius, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Tia Star, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Uh, Revengerist, thank you so much for the 15 month resub. Edward Basso, gifting another tier one sub to Heliospirus. And another gift sub to Sorakins. Uh, and Veld Veldrin. Veldrin. Oh, God. Veldrin. Uh, Veldrin Dosul, thank you for gifting 10 tier one subs. I need water before we start. <laughs> like to put it, thank you so much for 100 bits. Edward Bossy, thanks for gifting a tier one sub to Alpha Rat. Sewer, thank you so much for the tier one sub for six months in a row, but 12 total. And Hoo -ah, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub for three months in a row, 18. That was total. a name. <laughs> I am spoke. Uh, Bosco, stop gifting subs. Bosco, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Cooper Tails. Thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Captain Kojo95. Tears of Mozart, thank you for gifting five tier one subs. Tonster117, thank you for, for subscribing for tier one for eight months in a row. Bosco, I'm going to kill you. Bosco, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Reclusive. And thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Nightmarej18. Oh, God, one more. Ever Bosco, thank you for giving a tier one sub to Zizu the Dark Witch. Okay, we're done. We're done. Timing out. We're done. <laughs> no more. No more gifts. Monster, oh, my God. Those don't count anymore. I'm sorry. I, I see them, but they don't I count. I don't get one. They don't count. Sorry. <laughs> Everyone, I got a bunch of DMs, people going, she'll die hard dice, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. You got this, you did it. Monty's you did great, Monty. You survived. What do you want? A third you time? Two seconds, two seconds to get some water because my mouth is dying and we'll do it. <laughs> Go. Look what you did, Chad. Take water. You already broke the DM. 
We Chris, haven't uh, even do started just, yet. Just because I'm I'm extra. Uh, Renfield88, thank you for gifting five tier one subs to the community. Ben J Dubs, thank you for subscribing for 15 months. Edward Bosco, stop gifting tiers one subs, but you did it to Sock Puppet Ninja. Thank you. And that's it. All right. Sweet. I'm back. I have water and my mouth feels instantly better. All right. Cool. You guys ready to Bye, get going? chat. Bye, chat. See you Bye, chat. Break. Until no, next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> chat. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. So. Hello, everybody. Welcome oh, to this one shot. There is no one last we left our heroes. We are joining our heroes as we speak. In the far south southwestern reaches of Alabast lies the army of Alabast, pincered off by both the United Clergy and the Fire Giants, fighting a battle on both fronts. Seika, you were called forth by Lady Saliandris, a known friend to Greckles, to aid in assisting the army by getting them out of harm's way, as well as any other tasks that may need doing with a very quick and precise and strong army. Your numbers are few, but for each warrior you have, they are trained to the teeth and willing to fight tooth and nail for the people who saved their elemental planes. As you stand in your war tent, knowing that your army is currently interrupting an invasion force from the south, you are alongside of your close admirals and companions. Individuals picked and chosen specifically for their strength, intelligence, and what other unique abilities they may have. Seika, if you wouldn't mind, because it has been some time, could you describe yourself to everybody, please? Seika is a fire ganasi, uh, approximately six feet, two inches tall. He is uh, very trim uh, on the leaner side, but very physically fit. Uh, his body is comprised entirely of living uh, fire, molten uh, pieces of uh, not rock because it's not rock, but some sort of molten uh, uh, substance comprises the harder pieces of his face as well as his hands and his feet. Uh, his hair is of blue flame held behind him in sort of a half up ponytail as it usually is. And uh, his face, which has a very mask-like appearance, uh, currently uh, wears its ever-present uh, but unnerving smile. Okay. And standing next to you, Willie, if you could describe your character, please. Sure thing. Just standing kind of lackadaisical is a water genasi uh, named Drizzle. Uh, he's covered from head to toe with pale green scales and fins on his forelimbs. Uh, he's got bright ruby red eyes and sharky sharp teeth. His hair is pulled back into a ponytail and both the ends of his hair on his head and on his chin come out and flow into this nice wavy watery like form. He's covered in a nice uh, armor but on top of that armor is a ratty red soaked by cloth that is covered in tatters. And on each of his sides are two kind of gold plated hook blades. And standing next to him, kind of mulling about the map that you've been provided, Zan, could you describe your character? Sure. Kors Vasni is a tall statue of an earth ganasi. He stands about six foot five inches uh, with a heavy set muscular build. He has a sizable gut that seems to peek out from underneath the scattered furs that he wears over his body and kind of has that classical stone grayish uh, sort of skin tone that are typically known for earth ganasi to have. Uh, he has nose, ears, and eyebrow piercings uh, with brass rings kind of put into them. And he is covered head to toe in tattoos of his favorite trees that he's seen in his lifetime. He also uh, has sort of a brown diamond colored eyes uh, with 
tourmaline protrusions for sideburns and on his shoulders. Uh, he has a bald head, keeps it mostly shaved. Uh, he also carries a massive stone warhammer uh, and wears ten small wooden pendants, representing his nine children and his spouse. Despite his somewhat barbaric nature, he all he always seems to be sporting a boisterously loud smile and enjoys eating apples, and he's doing his best to try and read the map uh, with his very low intelligence. Okay. So, as you guys look down and read the map, Seika, you are able to determine a few things. First of all, um, as you're aware, through the notification of your own uh, soldiers' delivery of messages through uh, flying birds that came from the Amalanta Plain of Air, um, currently the Alabastian army is being routed through some mountain paths to kind of basically escape from the sandwiching position that is inevitable upon them. Um, and as you receive word of that, you feel a sense of relief, though it does come with some bad tidings. It seems as though many of the leaders of the Alabastian army has seemed to have gone missing during this rescue op uh, operation. Whether they were killed on the battlefield or their bodies could be retrieved is a bit of an unknown. But currently, the focus is getting as many people out as possible. And, oh, I forgot our last person. I'm a terrible, terrible person. Oh, my goodness. Actually, this actually makes a lot of sense. Currently walking in uh, with a message bearing not the seal of the uh, elemental planes, but the seal of the Alavastian army comes into the tent. Sheru, if you could describe your character for me. Before you walking in is a willowy young woman bedecked in raiments befitting one of the noble class. A thigh-length dress of midnight hues adorned with golden accents reminiscent of the midday sun. Her lavender gray hood building the ensemble with gloves and leggings of matching hue. Caped off with black knee high-legged warmers and ankle-length boots. Standing at roughly 5'6", her form is partially obscured by an elegant purple cloak adorned with golden feathers with long white hair reminiscent of clouds and accented with a golden ribbon that frames her teal-hued face as two piercing eyes the color of burning sunset peek out from between her bangs. On her back rests a quiver strapped tightly to her form as a white gold feathered longbow hangs readily drawn at a moment's notice. This is, uh, her name is Talia. Talia Zaphros. And right, Talia, a moment ago, a barely alive scout had made it into your guys' camp bearing a message of, of the utmost importance. The man who appeared had two arrows in his back and immediately was taken to be cared for by the healers. You collected his message and are now bringing it to Seika and the rest of the war table as you enter inside with a sweeping motion. And would you would you say that your Talia would just like backhand and have the tent flap open with a waft of air? Oh, absolutely. Rather? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't want that to touch you. She's one for <laughs> flair, so. As you step inside and place the letter down, you see it does bear the seal of the Alabastian army, um, notably the crest of Balfour Belton, who is the leader of the Alabastian army, uh, and it is presented to all of you. Mark, brought... you are muted, by the way, if you didn't know. I know, I was, I've was. i been okay. coughing. I've been trying not to. No, wor no worries, no worries. Sorry. And go ahead, here sure. we go. I have brought the letter. Have you all been preparing in the time being? As best we can. The situation is rather out of hand. But what of this message? Uh, she unravels it and places it on the table. All right. The message inside reads, To our helpful reinforcements, I cannot thank you enough. But now is an important time to act. As this letter reaches you, currently leaders of both the United Clergy and the Fire Giant Forces are forming a meeting to unite forces to take over the city proper and enslave any who the Orin clergy do not kill or deem useful. Please act with haste. Here are the coordinates of the meeting. It will be held at this forgotten grotto garrison by nightfall. 
I beseech you, you have already helped us so much, but in order to save everyone, you must act quickly. Dash BB. How late in the day is it right now? Currently, it's probably about, I would say probably like 4 p.m.-ish. So nightfall is very soon. Nightfall is getting very soon, yes. Um, Seika will note the coordinates and confer with the map to try and uh, plot out uh, the, the quickest route there, uh, or rather the quickest route to the coordinates from where they currently are. It is notable that you guys also have mounts, courtesy of the elemental plane of Earth, the mm -hmm. earthen horses you remember that Vanguard Jade had so very much enjoyed. Um, actually, cores, you would be aware of these as well. They are basically just horses that are like made out of natural rock and vine that kind of, you know, blend together and are very noble and very, very reliable steeds. You guys do have access to those to help speed things up if necessary. Does it seem like we would need them to get there in time? You probably will, yes. Okay. Uh, for the sake of those who may not be able to uh, read this note from this far, uh, not because they can't read, uh, where exactly are we going? There is... Oh, what was the word you used? It was a hidden <laughs> grotto garrison grotto. is what it was called. Hidden grotto garrison, okay. Uh, a place uh, referred to as a hidden grotto garrison... Uh, it should be around here, and he'll point it out on the map. Mm -hmm. It seems uh, to be, it's not actually in a grotto, which is weird why it has that name, you're not sure. But as you point at it, it seems to be kind of part of a southern mountain. Um, and it is a very lone mountain. Um, also, notably, it is within Fire Giant territory. Not very well hidden, is it? I believe the naming conventions of these people are strange at best, but that's not important right now. We have a very short amount of time before we can get there. Unfortunately, uh, I think we'll need mounts, but we'll lose the element of surprise if we do. The earthen steeds will get us there rather quickly, so it really does depend on whether or not you want speed or stealth. I think in this case, our only option is speed. It sounded pretty urgent. I think we must go with speed, as is, too. Then by I all means, gather what you need. I would right. expect significant resistance. Drizzle, uh, as you're kind of listening to this, you know, um, because you're the water ganasi of this particular camp, have been providing the healing here. Mm. Um so you would have access to some healing items if you wish to procure them. Is there any preparation people would like to do specifically before heading out? Uh, what type of, we're in a camp right now? You are, yes. Okay. Um, I would love to obtain, uh, I had mentioned it earlier before we started, but I would love to get some potions for the upcoming fight. I've certainly she, got everything you need. As she glances over at Drizzle, and kind of looks him up and down. It was like, yes, we might want to get some potions just in case. You never know what might happen in the middle of battle. Sure, let's load up whatever we got onto one of those rock horses. Okay. I'll leave that to you. I shall inform uh, the rest of our commanders, the ones who are still here, that we'll be stepping out. Hopefully they'll be able to handle everything while we're gone. Uh, do not worry, Seika. You are a hero of legend already. I'm certain that see, we will be able to handle things under your leadership. Thank you for allowing us to accompany you, Seika. Uh, your thanks is not necessary, but it is appreciated. Of course. Stand tall, friend. You kind of give yeah. a, a far too heavy pat on the shoulder. Yes, you're already one... That's a hero amongst our people. And she kind of gives you a small little bow. The the uh, boisterous clap on the back will uh, be met with a uh, slight squinting of Seika's eyes uh, before uh, they sort of return to their neutral position as he he bows in equal deference to, uh, to, to Leah. 
Now... I will help escort any supplies to the stone steeds, if you wish. Uh, please. Alrighty. So, as you guys guys search out for supplies, Talia and uh, Drizzly, you guys seem to want to get some healing items, easy enough to procure. Strangely enough, these healing items have been delivered um, via, like, teleportation um, and various other means. They seem to be coming from the Alabastian citizens that remain. Uh, each of you guys will get a 4d4 plus 5 healing potion. We have four of those, you said? Uh, one for each of you, yes. One for each, got it. Yeah. And then you also get a 2d4 plus 5 potion for each of you as well. 2d4 plus 5? 2d4 plus 5, yeah. There's a cute little logo on it of this, like, smiling human with glasses on it. It's kind of cute. <laughs> huh. What a, an adorable mascot. I wonder who the nerd is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any other general items you would like to take with you on your mission? Uh, I imagine we're not going to be gone long enough that rations would be necessary. Rations are unfortunately not that important. Yeah, okay. okay I figured. Um... Uh, do everyone have... Does everyone here have ranged capabilities for the most part? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Cheryl was like, yes, yes, I do. Yes, yes, mm. yes, yes. Uh, I yes, could. I do in the form of uh, I Cheryl's imagine, character. I just imagine Talia's like, no. <laughs> Why the heck would you think I, of all people, and she like turns around and like kind of like poses weirdly so you see the bow, would have ranged capabilities. <laughs> it was just a, a glowing title above your head that says the living, uh, the living barista. <laughs> Ballista. Barista Ballista. serves coffee. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> where that came from, but all right. Rista bolts. Uh, Cors is going way, to turn uh, around. Just real quick, Monty. I don't know if music is playing or not. I There's like a little playing. bit of ambient sound effect. I can turn it up, though. Okay. Uh, Cors is going to you know pick up from the side of the war table uh, a total of, I think, five javelins and simply give a nod before picking up his rather large stone war hammer and heading out towards the stone horses to help pack up the potions and to ready their tack if they have any. All right. Easy enough. You Each of you have one of these stone steeds. Um, the gear that you have is easily enough to be carried on your person, though each of the steeds does come with an additional 50 foot of rope on its side, just in case. You never know. Um, so you guys are all good to go? You guys have everything you want? I can't think of anything else we'll use. Okay. Just making Maybe sure. we should bring rope. I don't know, just in case. I mean, you already you already have it on your horses. You get an extra fifty feet. I mean, okay. What do you want to use the <laughs> rope for? It was a joke. I see. I see. I see. <laughs> you threw it so well, it do went right over my head. head. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on. All right, moving on. <laughs> you guys mount up. What is your guys's marching order when you are mounted? I will um, either take the rear or sec like third. Uh, just because it just hit my head. Uh, we would take a map with us as well. Absolutely, yes. Uh, you actually talked to Lieutenant Scorch, who is kind of the remaining, you know, highest in charge at the moment. Uh, Lieutenant Scorch kind of bows and goes, oh, your emperor, um, here you go. This is a map of the nearby area. It seems that your location is going to be through this trees, which will provide excellent cover. But once you reach the open pass, you may wish to dismount your mounts here, and you'll have to take a narrow mountain pass upwards. Can the mounts make it up there, if led? They, they could, yes. I don't know the mountain myself, so I don't know how well it would be traversed, but... Very well, thank you. Of course, and they kind of give a low bow to you. I leave the camp in your very capable hands. We are awaiting the army, uh, hopefully, by nightfall, if not later than that. We shall do our best to return not long after. Excellent. Be safe, my lord. And you? And they go back. To, they go back into the war tent and kind of take over there. And then, All right, you guys, mount yeah. up on your earthen horses. Drizzle, it's weird. It's You're, very weird. It's kind of like... 
there's land you have to walk it's yeah you can probably hear drizzle making a lot of groaning noises as uh we're heading up is something the matter i don't know i feel sort of locked in place don't you it's not enough freedom out here like i'm just standing on the ground and there's no verticality you know what i mean do you not use the ground at the ocean floor? I mean, you could. If you're a bottom feeder. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with feeding on the bottom? <laughs> All sorts of viscera falls down on the bottom. I see. Uh, remind me, uh, where you are, the, the water meets the earth, uh, is it a place that you're normally accustomed to going to? Oh, sure, when I have to. I see. Well, you have to now, so cheer up. <sighs> Just get over it. <laughs> <laughs> For what it's worth, it's a lot easier to travel here. The plane That's of water not... is confusing. Uh, perhaps for us, but I'm certain for him, it's, uh, well, it's home. I did I not mean, mean to offend, I... simply that... Navigation here is usually in a more lateral direction. More I mean, straightforward. I'm quite not and used to, to having landmarks, but it's useful. Oh, don't worry. The ground itself here is sturdy. Large trees giving good shade. Eh, we'll find a good place for us to move forward yet. Mm. Let's just do it quick. I think that was the plan, yes. And as the horses take off Drizzly, you have to, like, hold on for dear life. Uh, a moving creature that bounds and jumps, and it's not smooth at all. There's no, like, resistance of the water. And very quickly and very fast, you guys take off into the woods at breakneck speed, rushing through the forest, jumping over fallen over logs, dashing underneath cold, wet winds, and slowly but surely, as you guys gallop and gallop towards your destination, keeping track with your map, the sun begins to lower and lower until a crimson red kind of coasts over the sky in almost foreboding hue, reminiscent of the fire plane itself, Seika, for a brief moment before it dips beneath, and soon you are galloping in darkness. Do you guys wish to shed any light to help with your path? Or do you want to continue forward, relying on the beast's senses going forward? I, I, I will. Um, actually, how how well briefed would Seika have been about how the horses operate? Are they capable of navigating in darkness through some sort of tremor sense? Uh, they do. Yes, they do have tremor sense. Okay. Uh, then, given that uh, we're relying on the horses, uh, I don't think I will provide them. Okay. I will roll a survival check for the horses. No no more light than my body naturally gives off. Yeah. It's a glowing rave stick or like an overly saturated <laughs> person. It's, it's, that, <laughs> it's that gif of the man walking in fire. Like when everything <laughs> yeah. around him is black so you just see the flames. Okay, very interesting. As the horses continue to gallop, there's a moment where they kind of stop in place and don't move for a moment. Yes. Why isn't it going? It kind of backs underneath a tree and kind of lowers for a moment. And that you watch is, is something the matter? Can you speak with them? Uh, I'm assuming he can't speak to the steeds themselves, but can hopefully try and get in a sense as to if they're afraid or if they're just tired or... Roll a, this is a hard one, um, of your choice, roll an animal handling or a survival check. Let's go with survival. That is an eight. Eight. They're acting weird. That's kind of odd. And as you're thinking that, you hear overhead <laughs> wings coasting above the tree line, landing in a tree, not too far off, maybe 100 feet off from where you currently are. As you see an armored individual, an elf, currently looking around the terrain, and you notice that the horses have currently positioned themselves to camouflage you guys into the woods. 
They rolled a natural 20 on their perception check. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Horse. Smart horse. horses. Only Corse is... sees the flying, or we all see this? Uh, you all see this. Okay. As you see what looks to be a United Clergy Ranger Scout on the back of a giant eagle currently surveying the area before <laughs> taking back off. And good news, not heading towards your camp. They seem to be heading... Uh, a, not where you guys are going exactly. They seem to be heading more north, whereas your camp is a lot more eastern to where your position is at the moment. And as the bird flies off, there's a deep... As the steeds kind of like shake their earthen necks and then kind of begin to slowly trot back in where they were going and eventually pick up more speed and continue to gallop. Seika will gently pat the horse on the neck as just a sign of appreciation. Yeah, that was a really good roll. They rolled. They had advantage because of the tremor sense, so they could feel it land. Mm. Wow! Twenty. Thank you, horses. That was certainly close. I didn't have to make that roll. (laughs) That was certainly close. See, I told you there was nothing to worry about. Let's try and keep ourselves a little less uh, a little less obvious going forward. I was under the impression that they would not be out during the night. You know, loving the sun and all. Given the nature of their meeting, I imagine that their defenses are in high supply. We're running into a big party, it sounds like. Hey, Something for all of us, I assume. Let us hope the party has not started yet. (laughs) Can't start a party until we walk in. As you guys continue to gallop. <laughs> As you guys continue to gallop in a cool montage, uh, the <laughs> moon begins to rise over the sky, a half moon. As you guys proceed forward, eventually following the trail of the map, using your sword sake as a light to check your map, you turn off of a path and kind of breach over a road. Not a very well trodden road, but a road nonetheless very open. Uh, make your way across it into more foliage, you know, splashing through pond water and jumping over fallen trees. And eventually, all four of you look up and see the mountain ahead of you. It's not a very large mountain. It's more of like a... Um... Actually, Coors, you'd have personal offense to this being called a mountain. Um, it's more <laughs> of a like rocky, large rocky protrusion. It is quite big. You've seen bigger, though. Um, but it is a very white stoned, rocky protrusion with not a lot of plants on it. And notably, all of you notice this, you can count about three or four lights, probably three kind of peppered on this mountainside, kind of near the top. Hmm. I'm a little bit out of my element. What exactly are we looking at here? A small mound. Uh, If this is what people typically call mountains, then the steeds will have no problem getting up there. Still, for their sake, I'm not sure they'd be of much use in combat, and if they fall, we'll have a hard time getting back. We should leave them here. What about those lights up there? Likely encampments. Huh. Although why there are three, I cannot say. Perhaps... Centuries? Big party. Uh, can one of you potentially scout out the head? At least for me. My eyes aren't what they used to be. Unfortunately, my eyes are not quite that good. And I didn't bring a spyglass. <laughs> Oops. Those are expensive, though. Is there any dense coverage or anything near us for us you to guys, be able- You guys are currently in a very dense forest at the base of the mountain. Okay. And you uh, stopped here because you can see that curling off kind of to the left side of where you currently are is a mountain path that goes up. It's very old. Uh, definitely has not been tended to, but it does kind of start... It begins to curl up the mountain a bit. Right. And if we want to tie up the steeds here, I can make a small pin for them and we can go on foot if that's what you want to do. How far away is the encampments from where we're currently standing? 
quite a distance. Um, okay. It looks like it's going to be a, at least like a 30 minute hike to get up there. It is like these little blips of light that you can see currently. And they're very, like, very together. They're not very separated. Uh, but you count three of them. One, one's really tall, one's kind of medium. And then one's a little bit faded. It seems to be further back, possibly. Um, but you can't make out what exactly those are. Um, okay. But the hike up is is going to be a hike. It is going to be definitely a walk. Why don't we ride halfway? That way, if we need to turn back in case of emergencies, our ride is not very far away. My concern is that they will know we are coming. Hmm. There's not a lot of vegetation on this mountain, so our approach is not well covered. Plus, they are not the quietest animals. <laughs> that is true. You are correct. Hey, Lord Saker, we should make a choice sooner rather than later, considering time is of the essence. <laughs> yes, I believe tying them up is the correct choice. We'll proceed I will on foot. Your lead. That's a mistake. <laughs> uh, Drizzle, go ahead for me and make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, you, you're choosing yeah. dexterity? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Your favorite stat. <laughs> <laughs> this is a flavor thing. That said, I do get a plus two uh, bonus to all of my saving throws, so. Nice. Here we go. Let's see. And... Okay, it's 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 not as bad as it could have been. You don't fall on your butt, but you have to climb off the horse onto the ground instead of floating off the horse and just floating. So you kind of like you begin to like turn on your side, but manage to kind of like oh take my leg off, and then uh, you like drop go. down. It's very clunky, but you don't fall on your ass, and it's you know not the worst thing that could possibly happen. I'm still the rest on of you guys on the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the rest of you guys dismount easily, um, as you all have experienced either riding something or, you know, being on Earth. Uh, and easy enough, you guys just take one of the vines that is kind of part of this creature and you tie it to one of the trees and it stays in place. I spare a, th a momentary thought for Kinushi, wherever he is. Mm -hmm. Boris will uh, take off his boots so he can kind of feel the, the ground underneath his toes as he's going to leave a a small bag of apples for the stone horses, hoping that it will please them while we are gone. Yeah, they kind of like nudge the bag a little bit and flip it over. The ground, as you feel it, is awful. How dare they? It's a mixture of water and earth. They call it mub. <laughs> ah, I've heard of this mub. It's quite uh, difficult to walk in. Let us hope this mound ahead of us is not covered in it. You said the pathway was untended, but it's still along a very craggy yes. sort of foothill, so it's not super it's, vegetative. It's quite narrow as well. Uh, there's like moss, like there's some kind of arid moss that kind of is growing in places and kind of dangling, but there's no trees here. It doesn't seem like anything would have any help getting rooted. You do see like stumps implying that there was probably once trees here, but any trees that are here are like so minuscule. They're like little pepperings of, mm. of plantation. That's about it. There's no real cover here. Um, the moss is a surprise, but there seems to be a lot of moisture here. Um, assuming that you guys are currently going up the mountain. Uh, as you guys kind of make your way forward, the it's kind of like a, like a zigzagging path. It kind of like feeds and weaves up the mountain. Um, you guys do have the benefit of complete and utter darkness, uh, kind of hiding your positions. Uh, as you make your way over the mountain, you kind of proceed up, and there are some parts where, like, the pathway has just been victim to a, like, a, probably, like, a minor landslide of some kind. Um, so there's parts where you have to kind of climb over some rocks and move. And actually, in fact, I would like everybody, for me, to either make an athletics check or acrobatics of their choice to get over some of these rocks. Just to see how stealthy you do it, noise-wise. I got a 10. Also, uh, be sure to call out what your roles are as well, because we're uh, our potty, our podcast oh, our doesn't see. Right. So. Oh, you got it. Yeah, so. <laughs> got a 26 to acrobatics. Nice. Uh, I got 11. I'm not going to count that second one. I didn't realize My I hit it. My highest skill, and I rolled a 10. So, hey, welcome back. Seiko. Hey, it's, 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 uh. <laughs> 
I'm right there with it's, you, Mark. It's Corz's <laughs> best skill too, and they also rolled a three plus seven. So uh, this is all this, this damn is, mub. This is this <laughs> this is really funny. So uh, Talia, uh, Corz, and Seika, you guys are like being really careful and like you know making sure not to shift too many stones as if to alert any sort of detection as you guys have to very carefully make your way over the jagged rocks drizzle you're getting this earth stuff down this is pretty easy you just put a foot on it and then you push like you're swimming but you you do it again it's it's you know you got this you're an expert it's like the water's all on the bottom i think i get it now and, and as you notice that you turn around and just see all your companions currently like just very carefully like like, you know, shifting, like the rocks are shifting and moving. There's nothing really sealing them together. They are just loose rocks. Oof. But eventually all of you guys managed to just make your way over. The DC for this was 10, so that's really good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, did it! Skin of our teeth. Of us. And as uphill. you guys proceed <laughs> forward and curl forward, you do notice that up ahead of you actually is a, uh, a very strange sight a waterfall seems to cut through this path and there seems to be some flowing water that kind of curves down it's not very big but there is a rushing uh natural spring that seems to flow down this mountainside and as you make your way forward you find yourself with about a five feet cross of water ahead of you uh rushing over the side of the mountain in a perilous fashion crashing and rumbling over the side probably what's making all that mub Ooh. Just the sight of the rushing water has gotten Drizzle excited. Um, basically, his auras are showing, and like little raindrops are popping up from the ground around him. And he's like, you can see he can't sit still anymore. Uh, does the waterfall come, as in the, the top of the waterfall, would that be in the direction of the camps, or is it in the opposite direction? So the waterfall is falling down the mountain, so the camp would be above the waterfall. So we're at the top of the waterfall. You are not, no. You are near the coasting. It is streaming past. It seems like the source is probably from the top of the mountain, from a spring somewhere, but it's cutting right. through is, the mountain. Yeah. Is that is the source near the camps? You don't know. You can't tell. Okay. Stark. Yeah. yeah. Given given the potentially natural lighting of the night at the at this point uh would we be able to see roughly how large the cliffs are like how many feet ish um going off the side of where you are currently that is easily a 200 foot drop if not more um Fun. yeah the path ahead of you it seems to kind of like gently like have an incline to it that just gradually grows there are some moments where it just gets really steep for for no reason and there are like steps they're not carved they seem to be like they seem to have been like they seem to have been large flat stones that have been set up in a way to act as a natural stepping stones uh, where one would probably easily carve some stones, but clearly no one put the work in for that. Um, it's a very gentle incline, but you get the sense that this mountain is like, you know, I'm not good at math and I'm not good at, at geology or anything like that, but it's a tall mountain. It's not the biggest mountain ever, but it is, it is reasonably tall and it is definitely steep. A fall from here would be incredibly deadly. Completely reasonable. Is it a sheer? Like, is it so we, it's not traversable or would be able to slowly make our way up? Uh, if you look up, it's a natural curvature to it. You could climb directly up, but that's unnecessarily dangerous, I would say. The natural path that leads up is reliable, albeit itself is quite bumpy. Um, but the cliff up ahead is very sheer. Um, you could attempt to climb it if you wish. But uh, it would uh, require a very decent check to do so because there's not a whole lot of um, safety noticing majority of our myself included struggles uh, in just getting up to this far uh of course we'll look towards the group uh, we could try the cliff face but it looks uh, uh, like a steep fall uh, the road may be bumpy ahead but it's still probably our safest bet and as long as we're quiet i think we could just take the natural road the nice thing is because of this these waterfalls and you do notice that there as you the next <clears throat> kind of like walkway up above you you kind of lean your neck back there's another waterfall there. It's all this long trail, and it is decently noisy, actually. It's making a decent yeah. amount of rushing noise. If you look over at the waterfalls, they're loud enough that they may never hear us coming. We could definitely use that towards our advantage. Yes, but let us not be too hasty. Watch your step. This is still treacherous terrain. What would you have us do, Seika? 
I think taking the path is our best choice. Likely they will have done the same. We'll be able to get a better understanding of what their encampment looks like before we arrive. Very well. Allow me to tread the way and vanquish this mob in front of me. <laughs> Please I'm sorry. do. Everyone, I like hold these on. boots. <laughs> here goes here goes the earth <laughs> elemental through the waterfall. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So, Corus, as you make your way into the water, I would like for you to make a athletics or acrobatics check of your choice as well. My time to shine. <laughs> Okay. I got a 13. <laughs> As you step inside, you're like, whoa, slippier than I thought. It actually has like a layer of algae kind of growing at the bottom <laughs> that makes sort of a natural slipping sort of like texture to it, which is weird. Um, and so you stand there for a moment as the water just kind of gushes around your midsection. But eventually just managing just to kind of keep a steady motion and make your way across, you manage to get across the water that is quite fast and is a little perilous. All right. Uh, being deterred by the slippery green mub down below his feet, he <laughs> will still try to have a boisterously happy tone to him, though he is very nervous being in this much water. Oh. Uh, and uh, assuming he got to the other side. Yep, he made it to the other side. He will look over, uh, sweat kind of dripping down his brow. See? No problem. You did a good job. Seika will go next, and uh, given that I uh, can run across vertical and liquid surfaces with no problem, I'm just going to just dash right across the top of it. Easy enough. There's like this eruption of splashes and steam as you run across the side of the wall and eventually do like a front jump and land next to Kors. The three-point landing. Kors will look dumbfounded. That was an option? You did a wonderful job assuring that the way was safe. Thank you. Uh, it pans over to Talia, who is like kind of grimacing, like, oh, jeez, I wasn't planning on getting wet today. And she will make an attempt. Okay. As you run <laughs> and land, you, you were like, okay, I can hit the edge. And you hit the edge, you're like, yes, and then you fall backwards. I got and a 10. As you, yeah, you got a 10. As you fall backwards, all you watch is Talia jumps and her entire back and hits the water, and you begin to slide towards the edge of the waterfall. What does everybody oh, do? I'm jumping in and putting out a hand. Hold on now. All right, go ahead for me and make a dexterity saving throw for me. Excellent. Drizzle. Do you have a swim speed? I do. Yeah. Plus two to saves. Nice. You reach out and you hit the water and immediately, Talia, as you feel the edge coming, you hear you feel a hand grab yours as you are like, you're in this horrible precarious position where you're being held and water is just like hitting your, your chest and your face coming off of the waterfall. Like your legs are currently over the side of the waterfall. Like you're sitting on the edge of the waterfall and the water is just rushing around you as you are being held onto. And you feel a pull and Drizzle, I assume you jump to the other side. Pretty much. Yeah, you have no problem. You're a water ganasi. So you get to the other side, and I'm like, everybody, Seika, Kors, and Drizzle to make uh, athletics checks for me to pull, like, fight against the water and pull Talia from this. There we go. That Kors an, got a 15. That's an 8 from Seika. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair you guys, wet. <laughs> you guys pull, and eventually Talia, you emerge from the water. You are soaked head to toe, but you are safe as you kind of sputter out some water um, and your hair is uh, a little, a little, a little, a little uh, cloudy skies, I'll say. She it's just a good looks, look for you. She gives the most pissed off look <laughs> in Drizzle, Drizzle's direction. Save it. I wasn't in here for the water. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? I'll be fine. You're kind of warm. Please try me off. <laughs> everyone just stand, everyone warms their hands and stands around Seika for a brief moment. <laughs> Someone's toasting marshmallows. Air like, ah. hey, elementals, hit a little resistance and uh, look at you. And he'll try to like rub the shoulder and arm to try and dry them off. But I imagine at this point he's kind of covered in 
You're wet too, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Talia just kind of air dries herself a little bit as well. So you're. <laughs> 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 Uh, all right. So as you guys kind of take a moment just to take a breather, I would like uh, everyone to make a uh, either a perception or a survival of your choice. Oh, goody. Let's see. I'm bad at both. Oh, of those. this one. Four has got a 10 for survival. Nice. That is a 12 perception for Seika. And that is a 16 perception for Drizzle. That says persuasion. Oh, excuse me. I couldn't <laughs> see it. I have a 12. <laughs> Let me try that again. Persuade your observations. <laughs> there we go. Only, a 14 oh, perception. Only Drizzle notices this, but as everyone is drying off, you kind of walk ahead a little bit to where the path is going to go, and you notice a very large footprint on the ground, probably remaining from the water that came from this exact waterfall, left behind by whoever had traversed this mountain previously. Footprint, huh? So, hey, get a look at this. Mm, yes. Let's take a look at it. Whoever we are tracking had feet, or at least one. It is huge. It is almost five feet <laughs> tall, if not larger. Oh my goodness. It's I could almost massive. Fit in it. You could fit in it. How tall are you? Oh, like 5'8. You could fit in it. Perhaps this is the presence of a fighter giant, no? That would we... make the most sense. And they didn't melt in the water. Well, that presents a problem. I don't Seika think kind of turns to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think everything that's made of fire melts in the water. Not looking everything, clearly. Gesturing looking, at the print. Looking towards the footprint, does it go towards the road or does it go somewhere else? It's going up. It's going the same way you guys are going. It appears right. we found the right direction. Looks like we're following it. Yes. We should hurry up. I'm afraid we're running out of time. Of course. Follow me. All right. As you guys continue on forward, you guys venture up. Kind of, there are some cracks in the stone where to leap across, but it's not that much effort. Um, make your up to kind of the crude stairs. And every now and again, like you hear a rustling noise, you all freeze and it's just a bird kind of flying off. But eventually as you guys proceed further and further up the mountain, those lights begin to become a bit brighter and a bit closer. And you notice that they are in fact fire. They seem to be some sort of lighted fire beacon or brazier or something like that, some sort of light source. And as you guys proceed even further still, taking more delicate and careful steps, you kind of hear the sound of armor moving and the sound of some voices very gently. Nothing you can really make out in terms of words, but you feel as if you're getting closer and closer to your quarry. And as you kind of turn one more corner, you see built kind of as part of the rock, interestingly enough, are these wooden platforms. Uh, with various bridges between them. And you see kind of standing at attention on these wooden platforms about three individuals that seem to be armed and carrying spears and other weapons on them. And you see further ahead, the path is blocked by two guards bearing the crested sigil of the United Clergy of Orin, currently acting as defense. Are the and three individuals also of the clergy or are they fire giants? They're higher up, so it's harder to tell. Um, but they seem to have similar helmets, so you can possibly assume. And as that is described to you, I'm gonna take you guys to your map. <gasps> we have a map? A map. You guys, you guys get a map. Oh snap. Here we go. Well, oh. that is disconcerting. Should we see the chat? There we go. Check out uh, let me know if you have control of your tokens. I'm probably going to have to give you guys control. Goodbye. I do. I don't. You don't? Okay. I will I'm special. You. I got whoever I think entered in uh, when I was working on stuff. Ooh, does Thank anybody you. else need it? I do not have control. Okay. You're out of control. I'm out of control. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, must be stopped. Willie, Seika, you're good? I'm yep. good. Of course. 
Drizzle What's and Seika is good. Kors is good. And Talia is good. You're dry now, actually, Talia, as you finally, like, you air out. There's a bit of a chill in the air, though. But a cold wind is welcome in a place like this. It's nothing I'm not used to at this point. And I'm we're imagining still kind the of... air is cold uh, where she's from, so... Uh, we're still kind of hidden where we are. You currently. are. You are currently hiding kind of in the shadows, and it seems the guards have not taken notice of you as you guys have proceeded up the mountain. Just right. to just to double check, uh, is that the the basic route? Which the basic route? Sorry, I apologize. Do you, can you see the line I just drew? Or nope. Are you pinging? You could ping just by holding down. Well, I I was drawing. A oh, there oh. it is. Yeah, I just took a moment. That <laughs> is not a route. That is like a rock cliff. Uh, it looks like the natural path kind of leads up. Oh, it's that way. Okay, I thought we had yeah. to go through the. So basically, first. you guys have been going like this back and forth up the mountain. Mm -hmm. You guys are currently like around here at this point. Right. So the people on guard, they're not blocking our way. They are, yes. The I'm very confused. They're so. To the north of your tokens right now is just rock. It's just a rock cliff that goes up. And they have right. made these platforms on those rock cliffs that probably rise up probably about a good 40 feet in the air. Um, so it's like a pathway, and then there's sheer rock going up. So this way is is not blocked, That is though. That is not, no. That is flat okay, ground. So they're that just kind overlooking of gently, it. Yeah, it, it's okay, an overlook gotcha. over top of this path that leads forward, yes. Gotcha. To the, to the uh, east of your current position. Okay, and I see a bridge here, so I'm assuming there's a gap right here. That is, those are steps that lead uh, down and then up, essentially. Cool. So those those okay. are steps. Okay. Or as we'll look towards the group. Right. So what's the play? Well, I don't think we'll be able to get through without the guards spotting us. But if we can take them out quietly, we may still have a little bit of the element of surprise. I can get us closer if we wish. Relatively unnoticed. How so? Before that, Talia, mm -hmm. how capable are you with that bow? Very capable, sir. I can hit any shot. Uh, Monty, this bridge, uh, up here that's yes uh, is that a like a rope bridge it is yeah it seems a branch between these two tall platforms uh and is that the only way further up you don't know from what we can tell we can't see past this correct you cannot know there's okay. there's stone in your way unfortunately of your sight okay would you be able to cause that bridge to fail It may provide enough distraction that we can get by. You're speaking to Cheru? Uh, yes. Yeah, to Tilia. Uh, I could try my best, which is pretty good. And she winks at him. It is a rope at a fair distance, and it's also very high up, so it will be a very difficult to hit. But it is possible with the right rolls. If you are worried, as it is night, I can't get us closer, more undetected. I think we may, we may do both. If they are distracted, along with whatever it is you have in mind, that should increase our chances. I can make the ground easier us, for us to walk on, and uh, make it so that we don't make noises as we move. Ooh, I like that. And if the distraction keeps their eyes off of us, then we will be in good shape. All right. Uh... Kors will take out a, a bit of a, a burned leaf and some mistletoe and kind of etch it into his hands before putting it onto the ground and speaking something in an earthen grumble, kind of lower under his tone, uh, as he uses his racial ability, Merge with Stone, which makes it so he can cast Pass Without Trace. Nice. Which affects uh, each creature within 30 feet of me. Excellent. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, that gives us a, let's see, plus uh, 10. 10. Yeah, plus 10 to ourselves. Is that to our walking speed? No, it's just, just a stealth uh, rolls. Just a stealth yeah. rolls. 
Oh, that involves sorry. movement, by the way. So if like if you shoot something, you're not getting that bonus. But if it's you guys moving and you have to make self checks, then you guys you guys get the plus ten. Oh, okay. Right. So basically, the general idea is, even if the rope bridge doesn't fail, a noise on the bridge may distract the guards so that we can sneak by, which is noise based. So kind of taking a two pronged approach at stealth, essentially. And course will move the sand upward in front of their path so that there isn't so much mub. You got it. That dang mub. So with that, uh, Seika will just nod at Talia. And when we are close enough or in the spot that we want to fire from, she will aim her bow and take the shot. I recommend we try getting towards the steps. Yeah, how close can we get like with still a little bit of cover. Uh, you don't have much cover. Because they're higher for, up, right? I would say for every 30 feet, you have to make a check, like a group ch self check, essentially. Okay. That's okay. reasonable. So yeah. let's let's do the 30. Um, And then I think you'll be well within range for the shot, right? The 30, is that a new dance craze? I have a range of 150, so. Okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> this is so I'm just saying <laughs> so what you're saying is we should go backwards so, and then you'll take the shot just, just to clarify details this up here is about 60 feet up this okay. one here is about 40 feet up so between the two of them it, it kind of runs from 60 feet all the way down to 40 feet with the bridge so just, just right. for measurement's sake so yep, if yep. we get out 30 I could make the shot within 30 feet if we got closer yes yeah okay so yep. let's all move up 30 Grip stealth check. Here we go. We got the guards this, are actively looking out, so. Plus 10. So 27. <laughs> 15 oh. for Seika. Plus, plus 10. Plus 10. Oh. Don't yeah, forget. Plus, plus, yeah, plus 10, 10 is 15. <laughs> 15 as well. I'm and coming for it. your title, Mark. Real we bad rules. We, we, are, we right. are but kindred spirits, my friend. <laughs> and I got a 27. All right, so the guards have to roll a 15 or higher to see you guys. Uh, how did we do that? Two 15s and two 27s. How did we do that? Our grouping for these rolls nine, have been amazing. Nine. The last guard is a 14. Ooh, you guys are not noticed as you guys stealth forward. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You even you as you guys are walking, you you see one of the guards up ahead go, ah, uh, and you're like, oh, shit, shit, God, cold air. I fucking can't stand this place. And he kind of sits back and leans back on his post and continues to look out. <laughs> this time it really unnoticed. was the wind. <laughs> Must have been the wind. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Talila now readies her bow and takes the shot. Whip it good. Whip it. Wait, that's the damage. Hold on. You, you oh. gotta roll the hit. Yep. <laughs> oh. Oh no. That is a miss. <gasps> you I have a plus eleven. <laughs> I hit a fourteen. <laughs> you did. You got a fourteen. As you pull back the bow, you aim the shot, and you let loose. And you're just off the mark as the as the arrow crashes to the stone. Immediately, all the guards turn and look, and are like, "What was that? Go check it out." You watch as another guard joins and heads over to where the clattering noise happened and walks across this bridge to take a look. Cool. <laughs> uh, the distraction's working. <laughs> Stores will look at the group, his hands kind of outstretched, like, these what do we do? These two are currently looking towards where the noise was, but these two, like, look briefly, but keep their eyes out now that a noise has seemed to have raised the alarm just a little bit. Okay. So, so do we start moving we again? We have to get closer. <laughs> <laughs> so I say another 30 feet. That sounds good to me. Yeah. All right, another cell <laughs> check, plus 10. Here we go. I'm scared. Oh, let's go. 31. 21. 21. It's advantage. 21. 23. 20. All righty. 
I'm still going to roll because if they roll well enough, they do have a bonus to their perception. They are guards after all. Reasonable. First, first Oop. roll. We lost Willie oh. in roll 20. I'm, we lost I, Willie. I think I got like 10 plus 10, so that should be a 20. Yeah, you yes. did. Cool. Uh, 18, so that's a failure. Oof. Oh, no. <laughs> Money. Oh, no. Don't I, roll nat twenties on us. I didn't roll a natural twenty. I rolled a nineteen, and they have the plus two to perception, which breaks. Unfortunately, breaks Drizzle's stealth. Oh no! So, I, thought it was, I thought it was a group stealth. Well, it's all you have to roll for this because you're all traveling gotcha. as a group. So it's less of like an overall check, but it's like an individual check for each of you guys moving because you're individual gotcha. units in this instance. When you are not on a map, it's a group check is basically just like, you know, everyone rolls and then it's a sort of majority of a minor. Like, thing. Yeah. yeah. And then when it's all, when you're on a map, it counts as individuals because it's technically gotcha. kind of your turn. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> Drizzle, <laughs> as you mean. are stealthing forward, you slip on a rock. You had it, man. You had it. You were the ex the uh, master of ground walking, and the rock <laughs> skitters across the ground and immediately the two guards above look down and see you, and they're going to aim shots. They don't get a surprise round on you, but I need you guys to roll initiative. Barnacles. It's okay. We tried. <laughs> uh, I'm still I'm still new at this stealthing thing. You know what? We uh, got closer. Oops. <laughs> I forgot to select my token, but that is a 20 for It's Sika. fine. I can just uh, take your... Uh... Same. Let me know I if the a... music is too loud or too quiet. Ooh, I have a 12. It's a little Not quiet. Uh, yeah, it's pretty quiet. I'll turn it up then. Let's see. Drizzle, Seika. And, and I got a have... 21. And we have our good buddy Cores there. We got a 15. And we have Aaliyah. I like that so far my highest roll was on a stat that I have very little bonus on. Incredible. I'm right there with you, buddy. <laughs> Good to be back, you know? Yep. Ah. The big old dummy <laughs> savant. As a quick heads up, I've got three auras up at the moment. I so, don't know what see. that means. Yeah, it's I don't out. either. <laughs> out to 10 feet, basically, if you're near me, uh, you get a plus two bonus to all your saving throws, and you can't be frightened. And if you start your turn within five feet of me, your speed increases by 10 feet. Oh. Oh. Neat. Also, I'm going to move you right there because you're not in a proper space. Just oh. for the sake of measurement there. I slipped. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you broke the grid system. <laughs> uh, the guards notice you, and immediately they pull out bows, and they're short bows, and kind of aim them down towards you. But you guys are definitely more reactive. Uh, Drizzle, you are up to start. Take him down or run? <laughs> Take him down. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see. So where does he want to run? Oh, he's all he's up forty feet, isn't he? Yeah. Yes. They're oh, up I can't hit anybody. Here. Oops. Okay. So in that case, I am gonna probably do a that's one action. Nope. Uh, Seika, you will be to follow. Yep. Already, already planning on it. <clears throat> you know what? Let's, let's do this. This, this will work. I'm gonna aim for our friend who is on the bridge. Okay. You got it. Uh, with, not with myself. I was using the ruler. Excuse me. There we go. With the guiding bolt. You got it. And Go ahead and I roll the hit. Say out loud, get the nerd! That hits. Nice. Nice. As you reach out your hand with the guiding bolt, what does the guiding bolt look like? The best way to describe it is basically you kind of see twinkles and then foam shoots out from his hand. And it just kind of, it's like bubble beam. Yeah, that weird sort of I love beam. I, I couldn't understand what kind of form it was except just rushing water, but it, it was a beam of some sort. You got it. As you lash out your hand, this burst of almost holy water sprays out from your hand and strikes this guy and goes right through his armor and right through his gut. 
as he falls off of the bridge and clatters onto the ground, dead. Oh, don't get the nerd. He's already got. <laughs> the nerd has been gotted. Nerd Immediately removed. heads turn. And there seems to be more of like, a, oh shit, there's something here with the guards. Drizzle, does that end your turn? Uh, yep, I stay in place for now. All right, you kind of shake off your hands. Some of the water drips off your fingertips and you kind oh. of back to back with your allies. And Seika, it is now your turn. Under normal circumstances, I might charge forward, but I'm cool now. So instead, <laughs> uh, Seika is going to uh, shoot his right hand uh, facing uh, this part of the bridge. You got it. Uh, as he shouts, Tayoka! And I'm going to use Seer Radiant. No, what is it? Searing Sunburst. There it is. I got there it. There it I is. Remembered. Hang on. It's under uh, actions. Yes. No. No, that's damage. Boom. All right. But well, it can't make a saving throw. Because it's, well, it's so any, it's a it's it's a radius effect. Oh, okay. Twenty foot radius from this point, so these three guards Ooh. will yeah, all have right. to make a DC fourteen Constitution saving throw. The guard furthest to the left of you, Constitution saving throw gets a natural twenty, so it takes no damage because of the twenty. I'm very sorry. The second guard, uh, eleven. That is a failure. So this guy here who's standing next to his buddy gets blasted with the radiant damage for 10. 10 radiant damage. And as he gets blasted, he falls forward and collides onto the ground behind you, dead. This one here, uh, that's a 12. That's also a fail. They get blasted and kind of land on the ground and scramble up to their feet. They're still alive, but they are bleeding out in the head. And as this body tumbles, you do see that they are wearing the Orin clergy armor. It is not very nice armor. These uh, clearly are foot soldiers, um, but they are definitely Orin clergy for sure. Which one was still uh, alive? This one right here. They kind of stagger back to their feet and re-aim their bow. That's, uh, do to do. What is the range on darts? I believe it's 30, 60. I can double check though. Oh, I don't, why don't I have darts? <gasps> My darts didn't come in. <gasps> Mark, no. <laughs> Not your what am darts. I supposed to, what am I supposed <laughs> to do without my darts? Die. Explode in place. Uh, let me. Uh, they are 2060. 2060. Okay, so at 35, that's not going to work. But, because he's 40 feet up. He is, yes. He is 40 feet up. And we're 35 feet away. Mm -hmm. That's probably out of range, yeah? Um, I think, I always forget this, because task is ridiculous. I'm just gonna check this real fast. I'm gonna try and grab darts real quick. I don't know where they are, why they're not in my inventory. Uh, Did you equip it? Because I think you have to equip it for it to. Yeah, it's not. Oh, it is in. Oh, wait, it is there. What the heck? All right, it's equipped now. Now I have darts. There we go. That's so silly. Yeah. Thank you. Good You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, so it is 2060. This has always been a problem with me. Oh, okay. So you can roll it, but it's going to be with disadvantage. It's still within range. I'm getting messages now. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I figured I figured this was a case, but I just wanted to confirm it before I made the call. So basically, like 20 feet is basically the comfort spot. You have no disadvantage, uh, but right. you can throw within 60 feet with disadvantage, but you cannot throw anything past 60 feet. Essentially. Right. So he's within 60 yeah. feet. He is in within 60 feet, so you can throw with disadvantage. Okay, so I am going to, um, I believe that counts as an offhand, right? Yeah, you can oh, offhand like, with so a dart. So it's a bonus action or whatever? Yep. Oh no, because monks do, I'm so confused. <laughs> it can't, doesn't it count as an attack? You can use it as an offhand attack, yeah. You can also use it as a normal attack. 
Well, because the uh, Searing Sunburst is an action. Yeah. So I don't have a full action left. I only you have don't, but bonus you can action. Use your, you can use your bonus action to throw a dart, yes, because right. it is a light weapon, yeah. Right. Okay. I believe so, right. anyway. So at disadvantage. All right. Yeah, Sorry, it's guys. Finesse. It's finesse and it's thrown. I'll allow it. Yeah, go ahead. Offhand with a dart. I have not used darts in a very long time. That's a 14 to hit. As you throw it, he brings up like his shoulder and his armor bounces off. The dart, unfortunately, does not purchase. All right. Well, he's a butthead. <laughs> he's a survivor. He butthead sure confirmed. is. <laughs> I guess that's my turn. All right. That brings us to Kors. It is now your turn with Talia to follow. Mm -hmm. What okay. are you doing, Kors? Uh, two quick things. Would there have been enough time for Kors to pull out a javelin before the combat started? Because we were Yeah, kinda... it's easy enough, yeah. Fair enough. And ahead, uh, is that any sort of difficult terrain or not? Uh, that is rocky, so yes, it is difficult terrain. Okay. Uh, um, it actually is not traversable without a climbing check, so I'm going to say, like, right down here is traversable with no penalties. This is, like, you have to climb to, to okay. go up. Yeah. Uh, Kors does have Earthwalk as a Ganassi. That's right, you do. Uh, which means he can move across difficult terrain uh, without any extra movement. Would that would he still be able to move in a straight line or no? It's it's too steep. I'd say it would still require a climbing check, unfortunately. Totally reasonable. Um, yeah. He will move to there and try to climb up. You got it. Go ahead and for, for me roll an athletics check. Sure thing. Uh, nice. Kors got a natural 20. So 27 total. You know what? Because you got a natural 20. If you want to get to that platform, you are A-OK -okay to get there. Oh, awesome. Then, yeah, he'll, he'll climb up there. And um, sort of putting the javelin away to climb up, uh, he will use a, he will instead use a, a very large, meaty sort of push to try and hit the, just attack the guy with a heavy, meated fist. Okay. As you get to this point, too, I'm going to reveal more space for you, if you're okay with that. <gasps> more space? I'm just do you want me to wait on the attack, or do you want me to roll the attack? Uh, just wait for a second. I'm going to reveal sure. everything. Uh, and it's going to be a big map, so just a heads up. But because you're at the highest point of this area, you get the whole lay of the land from where you currently are. Preparing so to pucker. Yeah, allow, uh, allow me to reveal here. Right there for you guys. Ooh. Oh, cool. cool. That is quite a large Ooh. map. Okay, okay. I hope they didn't bring any archers. <laughs> <laughs> they do have bows. But are they archers? That's a good question, Mega Man. <laughs> uh, as you climb up cores, you see about another tower with guards on it. You also see, for each section of the path, two stationed guards. And you see currently guarding a very, very large stone opening. What appears to be a captain of sorts and two additional guards. So this is a decent contingency of people. Okay. Uh, Course, seeing the immediate threat ahead of him, will attempt to attack just with an unarmed hit. Absolutely. You want to go for a punch? Yep. Uh, rolling a, a total of 10 to hit. Probably missed. <laughs> As you roll to punch, the guy ahead of you like ducks underneath and just dodges the punch. He kind of like he had his bow out and he like is going to drop the bow and grab a spear. Okay. Uh, so they did use an attack action. I get a second attack. You do, yes. Punch him again. Uh, that's a nineteen to hit. That hits. For four bludgeoning. Um, All right. He dodges the first time, but you go for a swift uppercut and hit him right in the gut as he takes four damage. Uh, being up there, he's not going to rage quite yet, as that would get rid of the pass without trace, but he will look down. I'm here! What do I do? <laughs> that part I'm doesn't here. get rid of pass without trace, for sure. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, that, that's his turn. Alrighty. Talia, it's now your turn. Alright. Uh, she kind of curses herself under her breath. Oh, vapor rats. And... She's going to ready her arrow and take aim at this this man up here. You got it. As he's staggering himself and is like aiming a shot towards you, you kind of take your bow and um so this is my first time doing this, so let's figure this one out. Um I would like to do how do I put like this so you can see it. I want to do magic arrow. You got it. Uh, whenever you fire, do you do you want me to read it or are you good? I'm grabbing it in the book right now. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and so I will shoot and try and hit. 
25? That absolutely <laughs> hits, yes. Awesome. Let me grab this thing here. Ranged. All right, you want to do magic good arrow. good damage. Yes. That's cool. So Rolling over 10. you fire a non-magical <laughs> arrow from a short bore longbow, you can make it magical for the purposes of overcoming resistance and immunity for non-magical attacks and damage. The magic fades from the arrow immediately after this hits or misses the target. That makes sense. Yeah, yes. easy enough. You hit him and he is gone. You you literally, like, there's a pillar behind him and you just pin him to that pillar as he uh, uh, dies. All right. Uh... How far is, so I'm assuming this guy is up on the cliff as well. Would he be uh, out of range? He's going up. He would not be out of your firing range. You actually have a direct line of sight. Actually, if you move just like right here, you have direct line of sight with no issue. Uh, I will attempt to move. You said, do I need to, what do I need to roll for that? Athletics? Nothing. You can just move. It's oh. just your movement, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're you're oh, moving over the up. stairs. I was moving over the yeah. rocks. Like oh, a... okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Extra. He was being a mountain climber, and you were like, I'm going to walk normally like a human being. Hey, look, stairs. <laughs> I, wow, for some so reason, thought it, I was thinking it was tough terrain, and I'm just like, oh, geez, all right, here we go. All right. <laughs> there um, was a rather no, nasty amount of love. Of course, decided he wanted to do a triathlon today, and, you know. <laughs> all right. And so she'll take aim, she'll do a little sweeping motion like you see in Monster Hunter, and she'll take aim and fire again. While you were taking the stairs, I was mastering the aggro crab. Oh, jeez. 13? As you fire, the individual, like, brings up a shield, and just the arrow shatters against them. They seem suddenly aback as they actually didn't notice you initially until, you know, Kors started yelling and they were looking up at Kors like, who the fuck is that guy? And then suddenly an arrow came out of nowhere and they were like, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, and that's all she'll do for this turn. Alrighty, it is now the enemy's turn. I don't believe in them. So <laughs> <get> them. <laughs> well, you know, if only it were that easy. <laughs> Of course, the guy in front of you immediately turns and goes, we're under attack, yelling uh. out. Meaning everyone is now aware of your presence. F. So let's start with the foot soldiers on the ground. Uh, they cannot get close enough, but they will still attack you. Talia, this individual who you fired a shot at rushes forward and is going to throw a spear at you. Okay. Or attempt to do so. Okay. That is an 18 to hit. It does hit. All right. They just full on throw the spear at you and it kind of gets you in the stomach as you take seven points of piercing damage. Okay. This other individual will move forward. Actually, he's going to move one step forward and is going to do the same thing to, to, to you, Talia, and they're going to throw another spear at you. Okay. <laughs> uh, awful. That is going to be a seven, which misses entirely. As he throws the spear, you manage to kind of do like a flip out of the way and land on the ground as the spear scatters across the ground. <laughs> I like that I was supposed to be the ranged support. <laughs> This individual up here, Kors, is going to swing at you with his spear after he sounds the alarm. Reasonable. Uh, that is going to be an 18 to hit. That will hit. All right. You take uh, four points of piercing damage as Dang. he just stabs you in the chest. This individual is going to rush over. And is going to aim a short bow shot at you, Talia. Stop. Actually, they have a farther shooting. No, they see you, though. Uh, that is going to be a 22 to hit. Ooh. Yeah, it hits. <laughs> did I mention stop? You did, but I'm ignoring you. Oh. <laughs> it's not working. Okay. <laughs> uh, you take two points of piercing damage as an arrow kind of grazes your shoulder. Okay. Uh, this individual is going to boop, 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 boop. move. And then this individual is going to move right here. Don't fret, Mark. Think of how many low rolls you still have to make. 
Why do you think I'm fretting? <laughs> I figured it would hurt less if I said it we're, aloud. We're actually in combat now. This is where it gets terrifying. <laughs> that individual moves closer to where you are, Kors, and appears to be taking out what appears to be a scimitar. A very nice, very pretty looking scimitar. Uh, and in the other hand, a dagger. This individual seems better armored and has more regalia about them as they approach. That ends the enemy's turn. Rizzle, it is now your turn. All right. So Drizzle is going to just rush in. He's in his element. Got 40 feet of movement. Uh, as a bonus action, gives you a pat on the back for two uh, HP as I use Lay on Hands on... Uh, I'm sorry. Easy Breezy over here. Talia. <laughs> Talia. That's right. <laughs> easy Breezy, beautiful cover name. girl. Good old Easy Breezy. Thank you. <laughs> And then he rushes in between both of these two individuals. Okay. And both of my hook blades are out. You spin them around in your hand and stand between them as these two guards look a little terrified. Like, you seem very foreign to them. They're like, what the hell is that? And they just kind of like back up nervously holding their shields up. Let's get this party started. And he goes in and attacks the one below me. Okay, With... one to your south. Normal roll. That hits. <sighs> that will hit. That. Now, because he was hit by a slashing attack, um, mm -hmm. I have the slasher feet. So okay. his movement speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start Good. of my next Good to know. You kind of like swing around and kind of lower your body and you kind of slash his legs and he ah, kind of staggers backwards. He is not looking good. But I look back something. at the other guy as I didn't really finish that attack. I was just like kind of making quick little purchase of uh, what I'm up against. And when I realize that the other guy isn't looking too good, I give the other guy who is above me a wink and then I go back and attack the guy to myself again. You got it. Rick, we ask cat in pasta. Ooh, 12. As you go to swing again, he brings up his shield and just sparks are up off the back of the shield, spraying into the sky as he manages to stagger back. His ankle's now bleeding. <sighs> He's actually perilously close to the edge to the south here. The break of the <laughs> map is actually like a cliff face. All you can see uh, is his toothy grin light up in, in the half moon sky. That works. And I end my turn. <laughs> Alrighty, Seikud, it's now your turn. Uh, he was just about to step forward to help Talia, but seeing Drizzle uh, kind of get in there and start handling business, he uh, is instead going to turn and look up towards Kors. Uh, I am going to spend a key point to activate Step of the Wind. You got it. And I am going to pull myself up on this ledge. All right, you kind of run up the stone, bouncing side to side, eventually kind of grabbing the edge of this sort of wooden structure. And then you kind of just like swing and then backflip your way on top of it, standing next to Kors as this other guy goes, what the fuck is that? And kind of staggers back seeing you for the first time. Before he can finish saying that, a uh, fist is heading towards his face. You got it. That is just a 15 hit. 15, unfortunately, just misses. As you go to punch, he, like, staggers backwards and almost falls into his back, but he, like, shifts back. Haha! -ha. But it was, in fact, a feint, as a second fist comes out of nowhere <laughs> and misses as well with a 13. <laughs> You go Behold for like my power. <laughs> you go for like a low kick, but he jumps over it and kind of staggers to the side a bit with his spear. That's cool. Hand in hand, Mark, <laughs> we shall fail together. We 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 fall uh, as one. <laughs> you got him on the ropes. Throw them overboard. I guess that's it. Okay, Kors, it is now your turn. Don't we'll tire him out. Guys you guys can <laughs> flank as well for a plus two bonus to your attack. So if you make a murder sandwich, if you have an enemy between two characters, you basically um, get a plus two bonus. I am well. down for murder sandwich. Get up there, but now it's your right. turn. Make mama proud. Uh, Kors is also realizing that stealth is very much out of the option, um, considering he was also yelling and now there's fighting everywhere. Uh, he's going to, as a bonus action, activate rage. 
You got it. You, and you feel the shout, rocks get more jagged around you as you go into your rage. Shout aloud, it's time to rock and roll! And he will swing. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a dad, so he can make that joke. I was going to say, good dad pun. That hits, uh, 27. Four. That absolutely hits. Four. Uh, Ooh. 15 damage. You're, oh, you're, doing two, yeah. you're doing two-handed, right? Yes, two-handed, sorry. So that is going to be five damage. Five damage. Plus your rage, which is, what is your bonus for your rage right now? Currently, rage bonus is, uh, let me double check. I believe it's going to be uh, plus three. Rage bonus is plus three. All right, plus three. So that's going to be eight points of damage to this poor guy. He is still alive. As you slam down the hammer, you hear a writhing crack on his shoulder as he like goes, drops down to one knee, and he is barely standing as he's like... <laughs> Uh, I suppose he'll attack again. Might as well. All right, second swing. Take the plus head. Two. Plus two. With the plus two, 17. you hit. Yeah. 17 for uh, 12 Nine damage. 12 damage. You get him down to one shoulder, and you just full-on dad golf club him. <laughs> and he falls off the side, slamming into the stone and crumbles to the ground, dead. Uh he will look towards Seika with a sort of a happy grin, but then realize there's a c combatant about to engage him in just a moment. Uh, and that'll be his turn. All right. That brings us to Talia. It is now your turn. All right. Oh, uh, she winces as the javelin head hit her on her side. And she looks forward to see Drizzle encountering another one of the people fighting. So she takes aim on the person, the same person that hit before. Uh, the north, you got it. Um, we're going to make it another magic arrow. You got it. And let's try. Oh, 30. yes. Wow. The answer to that is yes. No, you miss. No, you miss entirely. <laughs> Too no, high. you hit. Hey. Aw, six. That's <laughs> oh. points of piercing damage. You, it's always like, as, yeah, no. <laughs> you, as you aim your shot, this guy is like currently holding up his shield to block Drizzle. As Drizzle is just like, he's just a blender. And as he lifts up his shield, you see an opening where his arm, like his arm is holding up the shield and you hit him right in the side of the ribs and he ah, kind of staggers for a second and turns and twists and sees you with your bow. All right. And then we're going to do it again. You got it. One more for Jenny in the wind. Oh, oh 12. No. Oh, that's a natural It's karma one. for the 30. All right, look. <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage. Uh oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nine. Drizzle, you take nine points of piercing damage ah. as an arrow strikes you in your side. Unfortunately, I rolled severe and I rolled an 18. Yikes. Ooh, stings good. <laughs> As he like reels from pain, the guy who's to the south of him goes, I got him! Like, just like. <laughs> <laughs> Talia just stands there and like kind of does the back and forth look. Like, yeah, he got him. <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't say anything. <laughs> what are you going to do? That man just shot you. <laughs> How oh, dare you shoot my down. friend? Look out, Drizzle. They're using my arrows. <laughs> <laughs> no. I end my turn. <laughs> All righty. That brings us to the enemy's turn. Uh, they are going to flank you, Drizzle, starting with mm. these ground combatants. They hey. have their flanking bonus now. Don't. Uh, the first one to the north of you is going to pull out a scimitar, and that is going to be an 18 to hit. That just hits. For a whopping two points of damage to you as he slashes your arm, and the guy behind you uh, rolled a 16 to hit. No, you stay on the ground. Misses? Yeah, that misses. You got it. As he swings, you just parry the blow with the blade, and he almost staggers back and then looks behind him to the cliff and goes, oh no, and kind of leans forward a bit. This individual moves into position, is going to flip a coin here. Actually, you know what? They notice you guys up on the uh, piece right there. They're going to aim a short bow shot towards you guys. Actually, Take a 
Monty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I forgot. I'm so used to not being this level. I have mm -hmm. three attacks. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, you're a fighter. You should have three attacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Force of habit at this point. We know uh, it for next time. Okay. <laughs> I just thought she was so embarrassed. She was like, I, no, I'm good. Yeah. No, I totally, I... <laughs> no, take blanked. that second shot. Hit him again. <laughs> yeah, you, you can hit me one more time. He's I still can take standing. it. still <laughs> standing. Uh, Seika, an arrow yeah. whizzes towards you. Does a 22 hit? Uh, a 22 will hit. However, uh, I'm going to uh, attempt to use my deflect missile. You got uh, it. So... Uh, I believe that's a D10. Wait, it's right here. Why does this say D10 plus 14? Is that Can you right? deflect it back? Well, I reduce the damage by whatever that roll is. Gotcha. Uh, is this under actions? How do I roll this? I believe it's a reaction. There it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's a 23. Okay, they rolled... A six. As they cool. fire the arrow, you <laughs> catch it. I believe I'm you have an going ability. to spend a key point to throw it back. You got it. Go ahead. Uh, so, trying to read this again. Uh, do you do spend one key point to make a ranged attack as a monk weapon. Okay. I don't. I imagine that's the same as the. Dart. So you roll. You just yeah. You just roll a dart, and then you use the damage of this arrow shot. No, that's not going to hit. It's a fourteen. As you throw it, the arrow lands at the feet of this archer, and they look just like, what? what? Like, they look so confused. They've never seen anything like that before. How do, how was I better at terrifying children with this ability than actually using it in combat? It's not just him. Uh, you can also see that uh, Kors is also bewildered by all of the abilities you've been doing. <laughs> Hi. Another, I'm cool. <laughs> another archer is going to aim a shot towards you, Seika. Well, it's uh, that misses. is not gonna hit. That's an eight. So that misses Thank entirely. Goodness, because I can't react twice. Cores, you hear running footsteps on stone, eventually to wood, and eventually right next to you as this more tougher individual brings out his scimitar and his dagger and is going to swing at you. First attack uh, is a twenty-three to hit. Definitely a hit. I heard dice are being really nice to me today. Uh, the sponsored dice, right? Really mean to us today. <laughs> you take eight points of slashing damage, reduced to four because you're raging. Yep. Second attack. God, I'm rolling like goddamn fire. That's another twenty-three. That's it. Uh, you take seven points of slashing damage, reduced to three. Ooh. And with an offhand attack, he swings for your side with a dagger. Uh, that's going to miss. That is an eight. So he slashes twice with the scimitar with accurate precision. And as he goes in for a gut stab with the side of his dagger, you manage to kind of like grab the hand and kind of wrench him back as he kind of re-staggers and constitutes himself. It's an interesting fight happening in the framing of the moon as you're currently fighting with what assumes to be the leader of this platoon of soldiers. Ah, fool. My gut is my largest part of my body. <laughs> <laughs> this guard here... He's going to have to aim up pretty high, 60 feet. Yeah, he can't throw a spear at that distance. This guard is going to begin to move this way as well. He's going to move all the way around, though. Shoo. And then this person moves here and holds their ground. That ends the enemy's turn. That brings us to the top of the turn order. Drizzle, it is now your turn. Ooh. Get him. So Drizzle is getting more and more feral at this point stares this person down here. Is he is he sea foaming at the mouth? <laughs> Absolutely. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sip. <laughs> he takes both of his hook blades and does a stab into the guy to the south. You got it. That hits, that absolutely 20. hits. And just wrenches them right in there. Oh my god. Yeah. You stab both of your hooked blades into his shoulders and he ah, goes down to one side and you just Sparta kick him off the cliff. 
<laughs> and you hear him bounce as he disappears off the side. Just put him there for now. The Can guy to the north screen? looks terrified, but resolved as you've just killed his friend. And basically, I bend into the downed hook blades at the ground and then just use the momentum to swing myself back up and slam it behind me against uh, the guy behind me. You got just it. It's like a dance of screen. death. Yeah. Tidal that waves. Hits. That absolutely hits. Woo! Oh nice. my god. Before he even gets a chance to avenge his friend, you just sweep around and you just cut his head clean off with the precision of water. At this point, he's just going. You got it. Who else is up here? You see as an archer sees you, they hold their bow and they seem to have noticed you at this point. <clears throat> actually, that I... actually springs their held action. They're going to take a shot towards you with their bow. Aim right for my bright, smiling face. Uh, 21 to hit. That'll hit. You take two points of piercing damage as an arrow kind of slightly grazes your elbow. Yeah. All right. Does that end your turn, Drizzle? That is the end of my turn. All right, Seika, it is now your turn. I really like the idea of a murder sandwich, so I'm going to slip past this gentleman's. For flavor, I like to imagine you like use the, the brazier with the fire in it just as a stepping stone because you are Dude, yourself yeah. made of fire. Absolutely. He'll right. kind of jump up onto it and side flip over to land behind the gentleman opposite of Kors. Um, I, and I'm going to, I'm going to air, channel positive affirmation. You can do this. Do this, Mark. I believe in uh, you. Don't put too much positivity. That'll unbalance the scales. <laughs> and then I'll fit. Um, as, he's, as he's doing this side flip in the air, he's actually going to unsheath the sword at his waist. You unsheath Master Kai's sword at your side. The sword that carved through the tower and saved the city. A sword of ancient power and prophecy as you bring it out. And using it in one hand as a as a completion of the motion of landing, I'm going to swing it across the back of this man, this person. Do you got it? Uh, does sixteen hit? Plus two sixteen. Unfortunately, misses. See, I told oh. you too much positivity. <laughs> you know what, Mark? You can't hit <laughs> this. Next one's gonna miss. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, as far more armor appears to be on this individual, as you strike backwards, he parries it with a scimitar and snarls at you. Uh, unfazed, I uh, use his parrying motion to flip the blade back in the other direction and attempt to swing it back once more with feeling for 16. <laughs> for another 16. As you swing again, you parry again as sparks fly throughout the air. <laughs> All right, so no affirmation. <laughs> uh, don't know nothing. I'm going to, I know I'm being liberal. I'm going to use a, a key point to flurry of blows with my free hand. You got as it. As my sword cannot make purchase. Uh, but maybe my fist can. 19 to hit. That hits. All right, he takes a whole four bludgeoning damage. Woo! You, you kind of slash, slash, and then like you kind of, as you spin, the corner of your elbow bashes up against his face, and he staggers, bouncing into you, cores, and then stabilizes himself and kind of wipes. You can see he's wearing a helmet. It's a bit more open. As he wipes his face, there's just a smear of blood across his gauntlet. And I'm coming back with an, the same fist. I've got many fists, but only one will hit, as this is only a 14. As you go to punch, he catches your fist and go and kind of twists your arm a bit. And you kind of, ah, and he kind of turns down and goes, there are too many freaks in this land. And he kind of pushes you backwards. <laughs> Remember when I was cool, guys? Yeah, that's over now. Damn that's it, my turn. damage. That's it. That's all I hate. All right, Kors, it is now your turn. As Seika is kind of unrelentedly <laughs> unleashing, and you are, you got this guy kind of pincered. What are you doing? Uh, he's going to swing, give him the, the biggest bonk possible, uh, with also missing for a 12. 14. As you swing down, <laughs> this guy sidesteps, and you crash through the wood and see as the splinters kind of fall down the side of the hill and kind of lift your hammer back up. 
Uh, he will then, getting angry at his declaration calling us freaks, try to swing sideways wildly as well. There you 20. go. 20. That hits. Four. Oof. Ooh, 12 plus damage. 3. 15 points of damage. There you as go. he sidesteps the first one, you just bring up the hammer with a roar and slam him right in the side. You watch as his breastplate like goes inwards, like a car, like a car being dented inwards, as he <laughs> spits out a bunch of blood, a very hefty and very damaging blow. Uh, all right, that will be his turn. All right, that brings us to Talia. It is now your turn. As you see Drizzle, like, running ahead excitedly with his twisted blades, and you see and hear the clattering and clanging of metal on metal of combat. Okay, okay. She's gonna run forward. Just for visual clarity, there is a guard here alive here and here. They're up higher, correct, though, right? Uh, these guys are uh, 40 feet up in the air. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, she's gonna run forward, and she's like, oh, we were so eager, Drizzle! Ah, uh, keep up the good work! <laughs> I totally didn't hit you before. Uh, and she's gonna look for a target and see this this man over on the overlook. And she's gonna try and hit him uh, with another magic arrow. You got it? Oh. 13. You, you go to fire and they step backwards and your arrow hits the bottom wood of the platform as the person staggers back. Um, I actually, before it hits the wood, I would like to find it. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I'm going to activate Curving Shot. So when you make okay. an attack roll with a magic arrow and miss, you can use a bonus action to reroll the attack roll against a different target within 60 feet of the original target. So it's going to whistle around and go for this guy. Ooh. Absolutely. Go for it. Okay. Go ahead and roll. A 23. Hey. As you shoot, it like goes up and like whizzes past the first person in face and they go, huh. And that's why women aren't enlisted in our army. And you watch as the shot curves, go ahead and roll damage. 12 damage. As he says that, his buddy behind him gets shot and falls off the side dead with your arrow. And the guy turns back and turns back to you looking horrified. She smiles, a giant smile. And so she's going to attack again. This you time on it. him again. With a 19. 19 hits. Oh, Another he's so 12. dead. He's so <laughs> dead. You did double damage. As you shoot an upward shot, his head is just caught by the arrow and just rips out from the socket. And his body just kind of slumps for it and then falls on the side of the platform. Cool, cool, cool. Good I'm going to imagine Good I shit. can't see this guy. <laughs> Uh, you can't because there is a, a, a wall or stairs. A correct. wall in your way. Yeah, you can yep. see that person though because they were standing up on kind of the side of the cliff and they were out in the open because they're yep. shots. So. I will then end my turn there. You got it. All right, it is now the enemy's turn. This individual here, Drizzle, is going to take a shot towards you again. That's a natural one. I eat the arrow. All right. Yeah, sure. As you as he shoots the arrow, you bite down on it and kind of snap it in half. And you see the guy kind of go, what the fuck? Just kind of scared. He's never seen anything like you before. <laughs> How high up is he? Uh, this, this platform is 40 feet up in the air as well. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, this person's going to do that. This person is going to run. They I will mark them as with a foot icon so you know that they're underneath the bridge. Uh, and they're going to aim a spear at you, Drizzle. Uh, actually, they're going to move one more foot forward. Oh, no, they can't, actually. That's as far as they can go. They're going to roll with disadvantage, then. As they chuck a spear your way. Oh, this is so sad. Uh, that's going to be a five to hit you. I think that's going to miss. That's going to miss. I think this individual is gonna, yeah, he's gonna go around and help. I you implore watch. you to reconsider. This other foot soldier is gonna climb up and he is gonna huck a spear at you, Seika. That counts as a missile, doesn't it? It does, because it's a ranged weapon, and that is going Ooh. to be a uh, 18 to hit you. Uh, that will hit. Okay. Oh. 
you take five points of piercing damage as the spear uh, stabs you in the back unless you'd like to do something. Zero points of piercing damage. Oh, deflect missiles. Yes. You catch the spear out of midair as it's thrown, and the guy goes, bloody hell. Kind of looking at you holding the spear, and it's kind of like sizzling in your hands. Uh, this one I will not throw back, but I will sort of have caught it over my shoulder uh, since the attention of the knight was grabbed by Kors, and I'll sort of look over my shoulder, allowing my eyes to sort of burn along with the sizzle of the spear. I like to imagine you grab it and just flip it around and just go funk right into the ground. <laughs> Alrighty, that ends the enemy's turn. Or actually, no, the captain needs to go. The captain, no, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. <laughs> does he That's, have to? He is going to go for Kors, because Kors has been a more threatening presence. I'm sorry. Rude! <laughs> sorry, I've been hitting. I'm Three standing you, right Kors. here. First attack is a 16. That is a hit. All right. That is going to be seven points of damage reduced to three because you're raging. Okay. Second scimitar swing. Uh, that's definitely going to miss. That is an eight. And the dagger swing is going to be a uh, 17 to hit. That will hit. Okay. You take seven points of piercing damage reduced down to three as you are raging as he just slashes twice towards you. You manage to parry the second blow, but he goes in with that. You're like, shit, the dagger, and he stabs you right in the side with that dagger. My gut. And as we reach the top of the turn order, here's where we're going to take a break. All right. Hey. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep the combat music on just to keep the energy good. Sounds good to me. Since we are taking a break, you all know what that means. It is time for the patented Mark Halftime Show, 100% not stolen from Edward Bosco. How you doing, chat? I hope y'all are enjoying it so far. <laughs> I'm laughing because our roles technically aren't even atrocious or bad or anything. It's just these guys have really high like AC and whatnot. Yeah. No, I would argue that with a plus seven to basically every attack I take, not being able to hit someone with an AC of 16 is pretty bad. You hit once. I hit I once <laughs> out of like six attacks. So, you know. At least you didn't Vito, forget Vito, Cheru your is not replacing you. Cheru, it, it's it's mimicry in the, in the highest form of flattery, you know? We rolled awful. I don't we know, did. man. Yeah. I killed three people so far. We had tremendous yeah, grouping no. in our roles. And I also, are... <laughs> that's with me yeah. forgetting that I had two ex like an extra attack on two of my yeah. attacks. You're, you're <laughs> doing the best job. You're doing the best job, for sure. Uh, I Drizzle's doing a great job, too, but... though. Drizzle's terrifying right now. Oh. I'm not saying anything. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> Drizzle has been holding down the entirety of that right flank. The Sparta boot off the side of the cliff was my favorite. In my head, I was just like, now he can't deliver a message. Yeah, Curving Shot is pretty great. I um, I think what we all need to do is just uh, fight better. Yeah, just just roll better, guys. Come on. Just a little Extra bit. Extra effort. All right, fine. Just a little I will. bit better. Sure. Jeez. Uh, I'm going to try and catch some of these. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, 100 bits. From uh, the real tech bandit, the flame emperor is going to light them up. I, I mean, I'm trying, man. 100 bits from Tix Dixel. This has been super exciting. I'm so happy to see Seika back and the entire Ganassi squad has been an absolute blast. Thank you for joining slash rejoining the show. Thank you. 100 bits from Like to Booya. Cheru, Willy, and Zan, your characters are so cool and all the character art is great. I think I know, but can we get an artist shout out? Yeah. I think, I don't think it's a secret. Uh, Monty can yell at me later if it is a secret. But uh, yeah, Brachizoid. Brachizoid. Thank you for the uh, character portraits that everyone is uh, being treated to. Brachizoid and also, did a fantastic job. I, I love the yes. art. Yeah. <laughs> and, and thank you for working with Monty to get the little talking avatars for who's talking. So now they actually will Light open up. their mouths and stuff when they talk. Which is yeah, super really cool. nice for, for clarification's sake, especially for one offs, I found. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Agree. It helps, especially if they don't, for when people don't know whose voice goes with what character, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. 
It's beautiful. 100 bits from Burnout Vaughn. The best reason to use diehard dice, they're less likely to roll like roll 20, unless you're Mark, which is true. 250 bits from Drago soon. Let's get it done. That's what was written, and that is what I read. 500 bits from Bubba Bob, 145. Mark, instead of Fs in chat, you get consistencies in chat. Yeah, consistency. Consistently missing. Thank you. Beautiful. 100 bits from Weaponized Thick. Seika needs a this pick me. He's still cool to me. Uh, cool. Uh, thank you, I think. 100 bits from Riotous Frog. I think Drizzle would have been scarier as an Oath of Ancients Paladin because Ooh. that subclass gets Misty Step. He can bamf behind people with those hook blades and go to town. I thought about it. I really did, but I wanted the speed. The speed is actually, like, more, I think, beneficial to our team because we're a very mobile team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's... A, he, you have kept up that entire side of the the combat pretty much just yeah, I, I saw you jump i was like i was like okay my next turn i'm gonna do like this cool flip over uh talia and i'm going to land in front of her and defend and then drizzle was like no no i got this and i was like oh, okay <laughs> be my guest <laughs> uh 100 bits from gtg maximo watching you roll is like being back at the table together mark lol Thanks. Yeah, I hope it. Uh, I hope it still hits all the same notes. It'll be <laughs> fine. Hundred bits from Neko on parade or Neko on parade. Uh, Mark, have you tried closing one eye for two days straight? It may help your <laughs> aim. <laughs> all right. I didn't sign up for all this ridicule. Apparently, just roll you better, did, Mark. I guess. Yeah, just roll I'm better. Go ahead. 100 bits from the real tech bandit. Been waiting for this all week. These one-offs have been something I look forward to. Well, thank you. Hopefully you enjoy them. Thank you to Cup of Squid with the Prime sub for 20 months. And Neko on Parade, thank you for the Tier 1 sub. I'm just catching these in chat, by the way, guys. So if I missed y'all, I am sorry. I'm doing my bestest. You need a spiritual cleansing. <laughs> I need I need all kinds of cleansings. Uh. Really, what I need is just for everyone that we fight to have an AC of thirteen or lower. Oh, that'd um, be fantastic. That would that'd be, be nice. Yeah, sir. Really, it's just that. it's it's just a mark handicap. He he only yeah. has the lower AC. Yeah. Can I just get a generic uh, permanent plus three to all attacks? I'm fairly certain Mark was cursed as a child by some sort of dice warlock. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is it like this in all of your games? Every single game I've ever played. Zan is so the sorry. DM yep. who sat through me rolling seven nat ones in a row at his table. So yep. Yeah, Bosco was excited to have you here, Zan. He's just like, oh, Zan was my DM. That's great. And I'm like, oh, really? Oh, shucks. <laughs> 100, 100 bits from Burnout Vaughn. You took the halftime show that's basically a target for bad jokes, Mark. You chose this. I did no such thing. This is the Mark halftime show where you're all supposed to be nice to me. Those 200 are bits from Zenlita. I missed these terrible, terrible rolls. Welcome Ichiwa back, Mark. No. Oh my god, welcome Ichiwa. Did you hear about that? No. I was at a, there's like a chain restaurant in BC. I don't know if it's anywhere else, but it's like a Japanese like fast food kind of place. And I was sitting getting food there because it was cheap and I wanted something quick to eat. And I was looking and it says, here at restaurant name, we don't say hello. We say welcome Ichiwa. And that, it just, it did, it gave me side wow. Yeah, that, that hurts. <laughs> wow. That really yeah. hurts. Yeah. When you're here, you're family. <laughs> it's just like. Oh. When you're here, you're here. And the moment, <laughs> the moment I saw it, I'm like, I have to tell Kaijin about this. It's, I need it's, other people to horrible. suffer. Uh, oh. Where were we with bits, by the way? We're at Emon Tizzle. 200 bits. Emon Tizzle, 200 bits. Oh, uh, nice form there, Drizzle, linking high tide crushing boulders into low tide sweeps out to sea and then following up with the riptide stealing breath. <laughs> Freedom 8, or sorry, Freedom 13. Hey team, I noticed, uh, thank you for 200 bits. Hey, no, hey team, I noticed roll, rolls on roll 20 aren't too hot. I heard you can give roll 20 those 20 numbers on your credit card. You can just buy good rolls. <laughs> I wish that were true. I that's would throw not, money to make this take, problem go take, away. Take it, take it from me. That's not how it works. I have a petrified Goliath to uh, vouch for that. 
fuck, I have to say it myself, Dippin' Bipples. Thank you for the 100 <laughs> bits. Hi, Monty. Hi, Dippin' Bipples. Uh, Wolven the Sixth, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Nice to see you. He, 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 no. Uh, then Maru Karas Corwin, thank you so much for 100 bits. Did you say seven nat ones in a row? Mark, what the <laughs> devil did you piss off? Uh, none. I was born this way. G G Lady G Gaga Max wrote that song about me. GTG Maximo, thank you so much for 100 bits. I'm happy for the seven nat ones got mentioned, lol. I've never forgotten that day. Burnout Vaughn, thank you so much for 100 bits. Hey, I'm not actively wishing for your characters to die right now, Mark. That's the nicest I can be. <laughs> Whoa. Busy pretzel. Thank you so much for 100 bits. Bits for the vibes. Uh, not Tarox, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Mark, have you had any two pound burritos lately? What does that mean? Oh, that's two a story. <laughs> not lately, no. I did see you destroy like uh, food when I saw you in, in LA. Yeah, I, I you, still you eat, eat a lot. lot of stuff. Yeah, I do. Mark, I think he's referring to the shadow run. I know what he's referring okay, to. Fair enough, fair enough. Papusa the monkey, thank you for 100 bits. Uh, how are the roles on display tonight? Represent how bad the fights went for the various Ganassi against the Oni. Oh, are the roles on display tonight representative of how badly the fight went for the most general? I do find it ironic that the Earth Ganassi is, is having the worst time right now, but, you know, it's okay. Is he, well, though? Well, besides you. Actually, no, it does make sense because you're doing the worst and the fire plane got really messed up and then the Earth That's plane true. was next. And then, yeah, and then Cher is doing really well and she's playing the Air Ganassi, so it's perfect. Mm-hmm. So, so really, Monty, saying. this is on Which, you because you, you damaged our planes, so. Yeah. yeah. Source of our yeah. power. How there, there dare you, you? You corrupted my um, phoenix. We were having a nice time, and then you came by and ruined it. <laughs> I, I had no hand in this. Things about. just happened. Also, I have to say as well, in case people are curious, uh, every, I, I presented the idea of playing Ganassi. I said I'd really like it if everyone would play Ganassi, and all the players here were totally on board with it, and I, I can't thank you guys enough because this is great. I almost said no. I, I almost was like, you know, <laughs> I feel like the Nazi are overplayed, you know. Anyway, we're back in combat. This <laughs> match is over. Fun is over. No, over. I'm not going to lie. When uh, Monty's like, oh, yeah, we're in the dark or whatever. And I'm like, shit, wait, none of us have dark vision. <clears throat> yes, I There's do. Enough. What? You do? Yeah. I have dark Some vision don't. at 60 feet in shades of red. So you're saying Seika let my big chunky boy walk around in the dark when you could have been leading the whole time? <laughs> you yes. chill, you offered to. I didn't know he was being polite. <laughs> uh, polite All right. <laughs> War, let's go. Drizzle, is it, it is now for? your turn. I'm going to commit a murder. So good. you see Just this... Uh, horrifying man just kind of shark weave closer and closer towards this person underneath the bridge. Da -da. That is right. Ah. They are on the ground. Kind and of bring I'm up, they bring up their scimitar defensively as I drop their card on the ground. Hopefully that's as well as their defense. Oh God. <laughs> Here we go. I get way up close, bring my face close to their blade, and say, run. But I don't give them the chance to run. I go in for a sword attack. That hits. <laughs> run to hell. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> Doing six slashing and three radiant. Out of curiosity, what's the radiant from? I think it's a level 11 paladin thing, right? Yep. So basically all of my attacks are effectively That's divine right. strikes now. That's right, that's right. Okay, so that's gonna I be, am... yeah, nine points of damage. You say, run, and then slam into him really hard. He reels back, and you think for a second he might run, but he holds himself there, blood trickling from his nose as he holds his scimitar with both hands now. <laughs> then die! That hits. Oh, oh he's dead. Oh, yes, he's very good dead. Hit. Oh, then sorry. die, you say, as you just bring your blade through his stomach and he... <laughs> and you just kind of slide him off your blade as he crashes to the ground. And then I just slide to the other side of this underpass to kind of put some distance between me and the guy up above. You got it. 
All righty, Seika, it is now your turn. To be turn, fair, by the way, you did give him his chance to run. That's true. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna someone, try. With sorry, this. did someone say something? They something. Oh, I was just saying, good turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> he answers in character. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try with this sword again. Maybe it'll work this time. Who knows? I'm giving oh, you negative. I'm giving you the absence of affirmation. Oh, that's, that's, a, a, that's a no. Uh, second attack. Thank that you. Hey, 24. There we go. Eight he kind slashing of, damage. He buckles the blow and you like manage to sweep the blade in and strike it through the side as he takes eight points of damage and uh, reels back. And while still looking at this guy with my sword, uh, I will also uh, spend a key point. Uh, and with my free hand, point it back towards the person who was rushing up to help and shout, Taika! And I'm going to use my two Radiant Sunbolt attack. You got it. First one is a 21. That hits. For 11 Radiant damage. Hold on. Let's... They're gone. They <laughs> just blast them in his chest and they fall down and like roll down the stairs dead. Oh. I wasn't anticipating actually hitting him for enough damage to kill him. That was a big uh, roll. You did it. I don't know. Can I use the second one on the guy in front of me? With disadvantage, you can, because you're firing into melee, but you can. Let's go. I mean, I have to use it at something, and he's the only other thing in range. So, Worst case scenario, you miss. I mean, worst case scenario, I hit my... You use it on me. <laughs> yeah. That'll then it will be Flaming while. Rock. Not sure that's how that. Come on, let me roll. Let me roll. Yeah, that's a yeah. twelve. Twelve misses, unfortunately. You, you or, like uh, you swing and you kill him. You're like 13. shit, and you like reel and like before, as you're going to aim the shot, it just fires up into the air and vanishes like a really bad firework. It's all right. It was an adjustment. I wasn't prepared to actually kill the other guy. <laughs> I mean, you killed him. He's very dead. I was just like, if maybe one of these will hit. <laughs> That's my turn. All right. That brings us to Kors. It is now your turn. Kors is going to uh, use the biggest bonk possible for a total of uh, 14 to hit. 14. As you go to bog again, you hit the floor again. You hear a <laughs> beneath your feet as the structure you've been slamming onto uh, seems to be taking some damage. Who makes a mountain out of mub? And you'll swing again. That hits. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Uh, for 16 Ooh, damage. 16 points of damage. As Seika fires the missile, the guy looks up in the air and enough time to distract it. You kind of swing down and he sidesteps, but you swing up and you hit the bottom of his chin and crack back his neck as he takes 16 points of damage. Mm. I Give like that you step. have like the one, the one swing just to test, you know, just to make sure you know where the enemy is. He's charging it's a, up. Yeah, it's a very efficient form of fighting. Yeah, he... he, he Gets space, and then he hits. Yeah, I like it. Good style. Uh, that'll be his turn. All righty, that brings us to Talia. It is now your turn. As you just hear laughter as Drizzle is on a rampage. Disappears into the darkness. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> and then you see a firework oh. go off in the air, and you're like, ooh, and then it doesn't explode, and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's going to run forward. Uh, and she'll now see this 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 guy, mm -hmm. and we're gonna magic arrow that baby again. You got it. All right. She <laughs> does the monster hunter charging. You know when you swing yeah, around. Yeah, you sweep on you... the ground. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with the arrow. He's oh, hit. that hits. That hits. In for eight. Eight points of damage. Nice. Noise. They're dead. You absolutely, you just, you just hit them right in the head and they just collide onto the ground. Yeah, doing the leg sweep thing with the arrow makes it hit harder. It, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, question, would I be able to see the boys down here yet or no? Uh, you currently have a whole mountain in your way. Okay, so this they're was above up higher. You. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Marty, it's so nice, but mm, I'm not I a whole mountain. Can I? Okay, all right. Come on. <laughs> Can I dash? Yeah. Uh, we'll use your action. 
unfortunately, to attack. Yeah, I didn't know if it so, was a bonus action or whatnot. It is so. not. It's only a bonus action for rogues and um, some other classes, special gotcha. abilities, unfortunately. Uh, I guess that's all I'm doing. <laughs> all right. You shoot the first arrow and you're like, cool, I got him. And then you just keep running. All right. It is now the enemy's turn. Uh, you, these two guards here, who are seemingly been told to stay put, are just like, oh, shit. Oh, the, you guys are just tearing through their guys. This guy is going to rush over here. Uh, <coughs> 30 feet. And he is going to hold his action. And this guy is going to, like, very nervously holding his spear is just the only person defending this door now. <laughs> Uh, the captain is going to swing, uh, again towards you, Kors, as well, because you're just, you're really dangerous. Uh, first attack is very sad. That is going to be a 15. Oh, that is a hit still. Despite oh, it's still it being hit. sad. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Then that is going to be... How do we have the same AC? Uh, seven points of damage. We shopped at the same AC store. <laughs> ah, makes sense. Uh, seven Se before reduction? Uh, seven cut in half to three. Got it. Second swing. Uh, that is definitely going to hit. That is a 24. Oh, God. That was outside of the dice tray, so it doesn't count. Oh, God. Sorry. Jumanji. Stop bouncing. Uh, oh, that's sad. That's four points of damage cut in half to two for you. Okay. And then the dagger comes out. Uh, and that is going to miss as that is an eight. He slashes once with a scimitar, slashes again on your front, your chest, like there's cuts being opened up. And he goes in for that dagger shard, and you, you grab his wrist and kind of twist his hand. That ends the enemy's turn. Drizzle, it is now your turn. So for a while, Drizzle had no idea where to go from here. He couldn't really see too much. But then catching the glint of this person out of the corner of his eye, you see his pearly whites kind of appear again, and he goes in. All right. As you get about there, please stop for a moment. Sure. His held action is going to go off as he throws his spear at you. Uh, and this is entirely. He rolled a five. It's, it's he, a you come running, approach. and he just throws the spear, and like you just sidestep it with ease, and then continue forward. At this point, let's go in very calmly. And we'll, we'll, we'll bring the toothiness down a little bit. You only get a little bit of toothiness. It's, it's, a, it's a solid smile. And as he raises his uh, hooked sword, he asks very plainly, do we need invitations to this party? <sighs> He just kind of huffs and just like looks down at you. At first he's scared, and then as you say that, he just looks angry towards you. Oh, well. And then he swings. Natural 20. Ooh. Oh my god. What a All right. hit. MVP's in the chat, because here he is. <laughs> Jeez. Here he comes to save the day. There we go. Boy. Oh, oh my oh. lord. Gone. Absolutely gone. You cut this man in half. And as you do so, the guy guarding the yard goes, Captain! Just like really nervously, like, um, Captain! Oh, should I be asking him? <laughs> <laughs> hey, do we need invitations to this party or what? Guard the door! And he, he's still fighting with Kors and Seika at the moment. Um, I think I end my turn there. All righty. Seika, it is now your turn. Hey, bro, did you notice that you're losing? <laughs> I will, uh, I will, uh, cast sword. Okay. 14. That misses. <laughs> mm, do it again. 11. <laughs> <laughs> misses, unfortunately. Uh, I cry. Uh, you can offhand with a monk weapon, right? Yeah. Cool. Yes, there's an offhand. 15. Misses, unfortunately. That's beautiful. What a turn. That's a really cool sword, dude. 
Yeah, it's a very cool sword. I, I just like looking at it in the moonlight. You know? It is like you swing Ganondorf. and he parries. You swing and he parries. And you swing a third time and he parries back as he ducks underneath Korza's swinging hammer. Korza, it is now your turn. All of this is just to give Korza an opening. That's really what it is. It's all Thanks, part man. of my plan. Uh, Korza is going to attempt to swing his warhammer at the, the, the Captain Man. That hits. There you go. For oh, a 27 to hit. See, the system works. That is eight, eight damage. points of damage. You slam into his shoulder. Not a really solid shot, but a shot nonetheless, as he kind of buckles. Uh, looking for something to maintain his rage and to be angry about, he will shout aloud, Why are there no girls in your army? And he's going to swing again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the same amount to hit and the Wait, same amount of damage. damage. You got it. Wow. Consistency, bud. Yeah, am I again grouping? Excellent. <laughs> Our accuracy is insane. <laughs> uh, that is his turn. All right, that brings us around to Talia. It is now your turn. All right. She's going to run forward again. And I will see. say any of these spaces here, you actually would have sight of the captain up here and this individual as well. Okay, instead of trying to run up here. Uh, that is a platform, so it's above the ground of the same level. So it's 40 feet up in the air, unfortunately. Oh, I didn't realize this whole dock was up in the air. Yeah, okay. It's up in the air, yeah. All right. Then, yeah, we'll run towards this way. Just run, run, run towards the serial killer. It's fine. <laughs> He's on our side. It's okay. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> He's on our side. I don't really have too much to fear, anyway. Uh, so she's excited because she's like, so this is where you guys have been. I was worried sick about you. You took off. And she's going to ready her arrow and make it a magic arrow again. And we're going to longbow after the captain. You got it. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Listen. Oh, no. Is this man this powerful? What is going on? <laughs> uh, it is just a miss. I rolled a six. So oh, I was good. really hoping she'd hit me because then I could catch it. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. I rolled a six. <laughs> Try again. This time, aim at me. Wait, 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 wait. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. It was a magic arrow. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <coughs> yeah, that does hit. So it whizzes around like intended. Totally wasn't aiming for him. <laughs> uh, and it aims for that guy who's all the way in the back. The guy guarding the door. Yeah, you got yes. it. Okay. Yeah, that hits. That hits. Yay! <laughs> Working as intended. The old slingshot approach. Yeah, uh, that's who I meant to hit to begin with. Oh, 13 damage. oh my god. Yeah. Nice. He's like, Captain Cap! As he dies. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess we'll just try and aim for the captain again. You got two more shots. Yeah, it's only the captain left. Nat 20. Oh, oh my one. lord. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, yeah, I totally meant to hit that guy in the back. And now for you. <laughs> uh, Double, 10? so reroll your dice again. Go. Oh, okay. 18? Oh, wow. Horrors and Seika, as you're fighting this guy, and you, you're like, you have him on the ropes. You just watch this. Phew! You just hear this sound. And there's like this blur through his head for a moment as he... Uh, 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 and then falls and tumbles down onto the ground dead. Boom. Headshot, she whispers to herself. <laughs> and with that, combat comes to a close. Whew. Ah, shake it out. Seika kind of looks at Kors for a minute. He's no stranger to rage, so he's kind of waiting a little bit for you to kind of calm down. Kors will shake it off a little bit and kind of <laughs> grumble to himself. <laughs> Hey, big guy, the sun's getting real low. <laughs> oh, my God. Of course, it's night. <laughs> but the night sky is so beautiful, don't you think? That was very well fought. Are you all right? It took quite a few blows. Uh, oh. We will look down as his body is relatively in intact still. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm not hurt that much. Nothing. It's just you shake it off, you know. It was like a warm-up. You gotta take a little damage to, you know, really get into the mood, right? You look at Seika, and he looks untouched. 
So your comment about taking a little damage kind of lands on his uh, ever unchanging and not very uh, revealing expression uh, as he just sort of uh, waits again uh, just to make sure that Kors is doing all right before turning back towards the door. Where is our friend Drizzle? I'm down here. Well, get up here. All right, all right. Or at least meet us at the door. I believe it is halfway between both of us. It is, yes. Oh, if look, I remember the that map means. that was previously on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, so we'll head towards the door. Okay, as you guys head towards the door, it will take you to a different map. <gasps> two maps? I know. Monty never has two maps at home. What? Nothing. <laughs> it's a dumb old coffee commercial that no one here is old enough. Let's see. <laughs> Tell yet. It was a nice shot you had back there. Thank you. It's sorry it took a little bit to warm up. It's quite all right. Takes a while for the wind to get rolling, am I right? <laughs> she smiles at that. As you guys enter inside, it is actually a fairly warm interior. You can sense that there's fire. And Is it me? No. <laughs> oh, okay. You guys wander for a while, eventually turning, and you see up ahead, I haven't noticed you yet. <clears throat> Seika, could you turn it down a bit? <laughs> he just kind of looks at you. <laughs> I'm not controlling that. Oh. Well, uh, she just kind of turns away and blushes a little bit like, oh, oops. Uh, as you guys enter inside kind of quietly, you do see up ahead two guards kind of looking forward. The path winded for a while. And the other thing, too, is that you're like, how did they not hear us? And then as you get inside of this cavern, the sound of the waterfall on the outside kind of echoes and bounces around this place, making it kind of loud. It's lit, Whoa. right? There is some gentle light up ahead of you that that basically shows where things are, yes. There is like a sort of amber-colored light kind of peering through some curtains up ahead. I've, hmm. I've, uh, till I get good rest or a lot of sleep, I won't be able to sneak us by like we did before. Uh, worry not, though. Uh, I had no good amber stones back home. It is good omen. Well, seeing as there is only one way in, I'm not sure how much more sneaking we can do, but... <sighs> Drizzle. Yes. Above game, you still have your auras up. Yep, they're always up. I believe near you I feel more fleet of foot. I may be able to reach the closest guard before he's able to draw alarm. Ooh, going in all sneaky sneaky. I'm I'm good for it. However, the further guard He kinda looks towards Talia. I'll try my best. And she gives a little wink. All right. Be ready. Should this fail, we will have to fight again. Wait. Give me one second here. One whole second. That's all you get. Okay, one. listen. All right. So since this is a surprise round... I need everyone to roll initiative for me. Okay. Oh. It's more of a it's more of a courtesy thing than anything. This might not matter, but I just need to do it just in case you guys do fuck up. That's a seventeen for Seika. Seventeen. Nice. Seika has a higher deck, so he goes first. And then we have. And then I got a fifteen. <coughs> and then, Kors. Kors will attempt to roll. There we go. Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> 21. <laughs> 20 win. 20 win. We have Drizzle. Alrighty. So as the surprise round goes off, Kors, is your first. If you wish to do anything, you can forego your turn if you wish. Uh, Kors will pull out a javelin 
uh, and if you would allow, Monty, it will ready an attack just in case the bow misses. He'll have disadvantage on the throw, but... You got it. All right. All righty. That's his turn. Seika, it is now your turn. As the two guards are kind of like looking, they look very bored. You do hear conversation behind them, but you can't make out what the words are. Uh, blade out uh, with, uh, with Drizzle's uh, extra 10 feet of movement, I can make it to this spot without needing to dash or anything. Um, so I'm going to attempt oh, yeah. to um, basically run him through with the sword while keeping a hand over his mouth. All right, you rush forward with the sword. The guard goes, <gasps> and then go ahead and roll the hit with advantage because you surprised him. Oh, with advantage. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. 19. That hits. 19 hits. Take the nine damage. <laughs> okay, nine damage. As you run up and stab him, he is still alive. Uh, then I will, um, utilizing the butt of the sword. He is not surprised this time, so it's just a straight roll. Um, I'm going to... Consider this just an unarmed strike, if that's okay with you. Just you using the butt of the sword for flame. There is ambiance. There should be, at least. That is a 15? 15 misses. All As right. you go to swing, he struggles against you. And then, uh, since I can't get a good shot, I'm just going to offhand uh, <laughs> the butt of the sword into his trachea. 15! Come on! <laughs> you swing again. This game hates me. He is like fighting with you, and you notice as the guard turns and looks. Does that end your turn, Seika? I'll <sighs> uh, uh, key point to try again. No, I can't. I offhanded, so that's my turn. Yeah. All right, Talia, it is now your turn. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> Good consistency, Mark. Don't. Um, <laughs> that was such a genuine don't. don't. <laughs> I'm going to have her run forward. Um, she's going to go for the, the man in the back. Um, we're going to make it a magic it. arrow. Absolutely. 20. That hits. Phew. For eight damage. Eight. You strike him in the side. He <gasps> kind of slams against the side of the wall. He is still alive, unfortunately. For him. Let's try that again. <laughs> it's a 16. Just hits. Well, that's the number you have to aim for. Well, yeah, I Mark. figured a 15 Mark. missing. <laughs> 11 damage. As before he can even get a word out, a second shot as he opens about just goes through his mouth and pins him to the back of the wall of the cave. Ah. I'm a... Or as well, pretend, pretend to throw his spear and make a whooshing noise under his breath. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then she'll go in for a third strike for the last remaining opponent. Please don't shoot me. 20. That hits. Good Ooh. hit. For 12 damage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take, uh, as you're struggling with this guy, you just watch as an arrow just... <clears throat> and you drop the guy to the ground quietly. He'll sort of do that movie thing where the body goes unconscious and slowly brings it down to the ground and sets it to the side before looking back and motioning at everybody to join him. Not Forest bad, not bad. Move up. Talia okay. lowers her bow and starts walking in with the rest of the group. Assumedly, I assume you guys would like to peek in through the curtain without, you know, obviously, I won't make a stealth check necessary, but I'll let you guys peek. Can we hear? As you can. You can hear a conversation. Um, you hear like a quiet voice talking, and then you hear a very big, loud, not like loud, but just a very large voice talking. On a, what on is a scale every... of one to 10, how like how uh, clear is it over the din of the water? Uh, it's a little lost, especially the, the, the quieter individual. Some of the dialogue is definitely lost, but the larger individual is very cut, precise, and clear. Uh, but what are your languages? What languages do you know? Uh, <laughs> common, primordial, and uh, Aran. Here, here's an easy question. Does anybody here have giant? 
I do. Okay. Give me a second to feed my cat because I forgot. Ah, <laughs> uh, sure. the dreaded goblin I'm call. Sorry, Hob. Oh, sorry, Hob. oh, it's Hob. Oh, no. Damn, Chira, you have been doing so much damage. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad You're you two are with us. <laughs> <laughs> Zan and I are just here for plucky comic We will fail upward. People, I had people being like, oh, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous for this campaign. And I'm just like, I got this. No Look, as fighter, long as we can hit, fight or fight fine. good. Yeah, I, as, that's our whole group. Is as long as we can hit something, one hit per turn, we're good. Yeah, you know, Hop right. has been uh, satiated. I apologize. I should have done that when I was eating, but I was starving and I wanted to eat really quick. Anyway. Okay. <clears throat> you hear the words, the terms of these agreements are of an equal standing. The enemy of thine enemy is thy friend, especially when thy enemy promises such a surplus of slave workers. Though, that being said... To fight wars beyond the fire giant borders is not so appealing to us. And the other voice, which is very quiet, needs your all perception check for me, uh, Talia, to hear okay. them. Come on, ears. D -d -d they fail me now with the nine, probably. You hear a sort of, oh, of course, but, and then it kind of goes and you're like, fuck, I can't hear. I uh. guess. Uh, I guess I'll peek through. All right, sake as you gently kind of peel back the curtain ever so slightly, I will reveal the room to you as I move the camera for the chat. So they don't reveal to out. me your secrets. Show me the map. Do it. Just a couple. Give me a second. Calm down, <laughs> Palpatine. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna do the section at a time here. Yep. Take your time. Ooh, the suspense. How many fires? It's just one. Okay, we're good. Uh, <laughs> has vivid flashbacks. <laughs> it's just one fire giant. What's the worst he could do? Mark, I need you to t retract you? 100% <laughs> of that you? sentence. <laughs> you see, currently standing in this room to describe it, it is a cavern, but it is actually well hewn out. There is a large banner on the back. Um, seemingly the symbol of the um, fire giants, you assume. There's also three burning uh, braziers in here as well. To the south of the room is a wooden cart with a sack on it. And notably, there in front of the, there is a, the, the most immediate thing you see is the fire giant. They are a hulking, hulking mass of armor. And notably, where their arms are, are these massive and giant spiked shields that kind of take the place where a weapon would be. They're wearing a very, very, very nice helmet, um, a clear sign of authority. And they stand kind of looking over a piece of paper across from them on this large stone table. Uh, you see a human man, but he doesn't look entirely human. You notice as his head turns in the firelight, there's almost like a twinkling on his face as he has red scales around the eyes and kind of down the cheek a little bit, almost like a draconic nature to it. Behind him are two very nervous looking guards looking up at this fire giant, like, holy shit. Um, and a same amount of uniform and attire that you've just slaughtered through, uh, currently watching this agreement go underway. There are papers on the, on the table and there's definitely a terms of agreement going on right now. Uh, Seika will look and make note of all this and then turn back to the rest of the group. It sounds uh, like and... they're going through some negotiations. I can make out some giant, but I don't regardless know what the other person is saying. To... Regardless of whether they've come to an agreement or not, we can't allow them to leave this room. So we won't. Are you saying we must break them? We must kill them. Very well. I will follow your lead. You, I'll have your backs. Drizzle comes in close and gives everyone a pat on the back uh, with a nice aid spell at this point. A little late. Okay, aid spell. Want to go ahead and click and click for what that does? Thank you. There you go. 
So basically, all three of you have your hit point maximum and hit points increased by five for eight wow. hours. Wow. Nice. So let's get to it. Uh, I'm just going to remember that I have 74 instead of you know. Because I can't change it on my sheet. <laughs> so. Can't? No, apparently. Either that or do I have to... You can effectively just heal yourself for 10 and then take take uh, 5 later. I would say everyone as a group, roll a history check if you wish as well. Okay. You got uh, it. Does anybody have the soldier background? No. 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 Negative. Okay. 13? Would you allow a religion check? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> that's a hot nine from me. Cores, this attire is very similar to some of the armor you've seen uh, with, you know, some of the, the military of the Earth plane. It's not one to one, but it definitely, you know, you can see some overlap. Um, this individual currently at this meeting is a general. You can tell just by their demeanor, by the look of them. This is this is a high ranking official of the fire giant military. <sighs> It would appear that they are in Congress with one of the general or uh, higher up of the military. You can tell by the ranking insignias. Then we should expect significant resistance. As I noticed before, I'll have your Notably, backs. the gentleman with like the 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 kind of the the iridescent scales on his face. Uh, he is not wearing armor. He is wearing like very nice formal looking robes. I trust you all with my lives. Now trust me. I will try to get the fire giant's attention. Talia, if you would take care of the guards. Sure. Drizzle. We shall attempt to take care of the other human. Something is off about him. Keep your guard up. Sounds good to me. Although, I need to make sure I ask ahead of time, so my hands are clean. We don't want to reason with that giant? Unfortunately, peace was never an option. All good. As you guys are having this conversation, Talia, you hear the fire giant saying, 50 slaves is a good start. We'd want 100 by the end of this moon. They're talking about wanting slaves. Oh, never mind. At least 50 to 100. We will make sure they get none. Are you Ready when you are. Looking for it, Seika. Drizzle to preventing them from leaving. Oh, you better believe it, baby. We've got this in the bag. I like his enthusiasm. Right. We will go on your order, Seika. Then let's go. <laughs> and uh, I, I will I will basically be planning to dash through the curtain straight towards the uh, the be scaled human. All right. Um, kick down the curtain. So we'll use the same uh, surprise round turn. If you guys are okay with that. Sure, just carry that over. Uh, the same or uh, order you mean? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to so double check those numbers. I'm pretty sure. Cores. Yeah, Seika, Korsen. Talia, and Drizzle. I'm just checking the numbers because I have to roll the enemies initiatives. They don't get that? Um... Uh, 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 they do, though. Haha, <laughs> funny. You guys get a surprise round because they, you did, the guards never alerted them, so, and they're busy with their negotiations. Hey. T E T. -E. So not bad, guys. Good teamwork. Alrighty. And with that, the surprise round goes off. And this fight will determine the fate of the Alavastian army. So, top of the turn order, Koras, it is now your turn. With his hammer at hand, he's going to rush through the amber-colored curtain, saying a quick prayer to himself to the great Zaratan before running in towards the fire giant. All right, raging. running in, raging towards the fire giant who looks down and you see the human look shocked as suddenly you appear. As he shouts out, for Alavast! 
and he will also enter Frenzy. Frenzied Ooh. Rage. Good to know. <laughs> and then Guns will, are open. Wait. He will attack. Two attacks. You got it. 20 win? Assuming 20 21 hits? Misses. Ooh, As okay. the moment you Ooh. swing, this fire giant lifts up its shield and it blocks you. I will bury you in the mob you stand on. No. <laughs> Myself first, I rolled a natural one. Natural one? Just a miss, yes. I rolled a two. As you go to okay. swing again, you hit the gonging, uh, the shield, and the fire giant kind of leans its peering, almost yellow-red eyes looking down towards you. And because he's frenzied, he will frenzy attack. Uh, actually, no, he, uh, he actually uses, he actually uses, use yeah, he uses yeah, his next Never mind. Never mind. That's my turn. Alrighty, that is your turn. Just a note, you have discovered that it, it never helps to say something cool before attacking on the unexpected. It worked for Trizzle. <laughs> it was cool. It was cool, though. It meant a it's lot. It's very cool. <laughs> All right, Seika, it is now your turn. You, uh, the two behind the curtain, the Seika uh, pull his sword out of his scabbard again. And this time, he will whisper the word, Tsubasa. And the, the blade will ignite in brilliant flame as he dashes forward to attack the human. All right, as you rush forward, the guy looks towards you in shock and surprise. And does a 16 hit. A 16 hits, but he's going to use his reaction out of the suddenness to cast shield on himself, blocking your sword. That's he cool. is a spellcaster. <sighs> I I don't really like that. Um, but I will attack again anyway. All right. For 16. Misses, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, what do I want to do? I would like to hit him, but clearly that's not happening. Um... I still have my bonus action. Uh, you know what? I will flurry of blows. All right, you got it. And 23. That hits. Oh, thank goodness. So eight slashing damage. And this weapon also has bonus fire damage that I am trying to find. I believe it's 2d6. It's a flame tongue, uh, I believe. Yes, 2d6. So, do, do, do. Uh, looks like it didn't populate in the game, but it should be six. Oh. I tried to roll, roll with, with, uh, D&D Beyond, and it didn't roll. Uh, so. Just try rolling 2d6 in, in roll 20. Okay. Do, do, do. okay. Hey, look, six. six. Came out there perfect. There you go. Perfect. Um, so as you, six additional fire damage. As you punch through the shield, breaking it, you punch him in the face, and the fire scorches him, but he seems mildly resistant to fire. <gasps> well, As he resist. looks up at you, and you he stares at you, you see the eye, the yellow eye of a dragon. And the scales on his face are a crimson red. Yeah, I, I figured it was going to be something messed up like that. But here comes the last hit. Anyway. That hits. Another hey. 21. Seven more slashing damage. All right. And uh, fire damage is only once per turn, or is it per hit? Uh, let me check that out. Not that it will really matter, because he's a dragon. But... Uh, damage is damage. Damage is damage, yeah. Uh, while the sword is ablaze, it deals an extra 2d6 fire damage to any target it hits. So you get to roll it again. Alrighty. Do it in d20. Nope, it should not be three. Uh, Oops. So I'll eight. take the two four. It's eight points of damage. Eight more uh, fire so damage that he will laugh at. And it <laughs> he, <laughs> shows it. he still takes it. He's only resistant, it seems. Okay. Um, I for for his sake. Um, Seika will meet the glare of this creature uh, with his own eyes blazing with blue flame that are now open uh, as this creature has his full attention. You got it. 
All righty, that ends Seiko's oh, surprise shoot. round. Talia can I, now... can I oh, just, yeah. I'm sorry, can I make one small adjustment? Sure. Because I, I did ask for Drizzle to help me with this guy, can I actually move to the other side? It's still with it. Uh, there is a table, unfortunately, in your way. Uh, even with unarmed movement, unarmored movement, that wouldn't... Uh, uh, you know what? I'll allow it. Okay, cool. Thank you. I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be nice. Just so we can get that murder sandwich. You <gasps> got it. It was part I of the plan. murder sandwich. All right. Who's oh, yeah. By the way, the curtain at this point is wide open. Perfect. So I'm just going to immediately, just to save some time. Delete it. Goodbye. <laughs> get out of here, curtain. <laughs> get out of here, oh. curtain. We don't need you. I can see. I can hit. I and can so fight. <laughs> I can fight. Uh, so she's going to pull out an arrow and turn it into one of her favorites. As we already know, it's going to be a magic arrow. We're going to aim for the first guard. You got it. 14. They bring up their shield and it bounces across their shield as he like, oh, and he pulls out his spear at the ready. She whistles, and it, just kidding, it goes to the guy right behind him. You got it. 15. <laughs> ping, 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 and the guy is going for the guy, and he like, ah, ducks, and it <clears throat> lands in the wall. Was that a Ooh. patriot arrow? <laughs> Sorry, I Notably, guess this is another reference. In uh, Seika, roll a perception check for me. Oh, dear. Okay. I'm trying. Sure. Just for flavor. 12. Okay. You don't notice anything. My Alrighty. passive is also 12, so that's kind of perfect. Uh, Talia, it's still your turn. We make a magic misses. arrow shot for the you first guy again. We're going to repeat until it hits. How about 29? That, that hits. <laughs> yep, yeah, that go. hits. <laughs> That's, that, by the way, 12. that's perfectly both Ooh, that's of your exactly, previous shots added that is together. That is exactly <laughs> his health. As you just, <laughs> as he dodges the first one, he's like, huh, and then immediately you shoot a second one and it hits him in the chest and he just splays onto the ground. Ooh, sorry I missed Aaliyah, the first Aaliyah, master of charging up. <laughs> we, yeah, we are, we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then for final attack, we'll make one more magic arrow for the last guard. You got it. Sounds like a great movie title, The Last Guard. How about another Johnny? Oh my that god. <laughs> 12 more damage? Oh. Six. Six. You strike him and he is still standing, unfortunately. That's damage is damage. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, she kind of just snickers and then gestures for Drizzle to move on in. And she got has it. her turn. Drizzle, it is now your surprise round. And Drizzle moves in. Huzzah. Here we go. Get some Drizzle. Time for the party. Comes right up to Mr. Dragon. You got it. Both his, his shield. His shield are is out. still up, so he does still has his shield up. Hmm. What if I were to hit it? You can try to hit him. Yeah, go for it. it Unfortunately, uh, as you go to swing, you hit that magical shield as he buckles a little bit. His nose is kind plus, of bleeding slightly. Does the plus two help or no? Plus two, unfortunately, yeah. Oh, unfortunately, okay. This is, yeah. Hmm. This guy's pretty tough. Oh, well, let's try again. Unfortunately, you swing a second time and the magical shield buckles the blow. Huh. All right. That That's not how this is supposed to work. <laughs> the surprise round. <laughs> Cores, it is now your turn. Both of your heavy swings did not have any purchase as the fire giant now rises slowly from his chair. It is your turn at the top of the proper combat order now. We are no longer in surprise round. Cores, it is now your turn. Cores uh, is immune to fear while he is raging, um, mm -hmm. but he does see the... He is taken aback for a moment at the size of this creature, but it's not going to stop him from trying to swing as hard as he can with the Warhammer. That is a 25 to hit. That hits. Four. 13 damage. 
13 points of damage. You go and you turn, and you're like, you swing under the shield and manage to hit the side of this fire giant's leg as he rises in anger. Uh, he will swing again. Let's Four, go. 26 to hit. Yes. Yeah. To hit. Good hit. For 15 damage. Ooh, nice. Damage. Oh my god. I'm gonna grab a calculator and make my life easier. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> That's what I have. <laughs> and assuming there's no reactions, he will use his bonus action to use the frenzied uh, attack. Absolutely. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, 18 to hit, which will... Unfortunately, miss, misses. Yeah. Kind of exhaustedly throwing the last swing just to try and make some distance. Definitely All righty. It is now the enemy's turn. The fire giant now risen to his feet goes, well then, Heinrich in giant, so only you understand, uh, Talia. Let us see the fruits of this union, shall we? As he raises up a shield, uh, he is going to make two fire shield attacks against you, Kors. Uh, okay. Rude. Uh, that's gonna be a twenty-eight to hit on the first one. Yeah, that's that definitely a hit. <laughs> ah. Okay. It's gonna be one of those days. I... Sure is. Okay. Uh, you take twenty-three points of bludgeoning damage, reduced in to half. Uh, so that will be eleven points of bludgeoning damage to you. Okay. Plus an Ow. additional. Oh, that's so sad. Four points of fire damage to you as well, as the spikes just lodge Ooh. into your side and you like are thrown backwards. And as you kind of get back to your feet, he brings down the shield and just goes for a backhand with the shield for his second attack. Oh, that's not that super great. Uh, that is going to be a 17 to hit, which I believe still hits, correct? Still hits me, correct. You take 18 points of bludgeoning damage, reduced in half to nine, plus uh, three points of fire damage this time. Okay. And hey. that will end the fire giant's turn. Mm. It, the What well, you can now presume to be some sort of spellcaster between the two of you just kind of wipes his nose. And he... he's got a cold. Oh, he's bleeding out of his nose right now. He's got a warm. Uh, what does he want? <laughs> hey, you need a tissue? <laughs> Too much yeah. humidity for him. Actually, he could do it in a hoo-hoo funny way. Yep, he's going to do that right there. I need Drizzle and Talia to make dexterity saving throws for me. Oh. All right. Plus two to this. 16. 16. That's a success. And I need one from you, Talia. Yep. Uh, 10. 12, unfortunately, is a failure. Uh, I would like to use my, if I can ever find things fast enough, Indomitable. Okay. To succeed instead? Yes. You got it. As the Draconic Sorcerer casts a level four fireball. Oh, I'm glad I did. Yeah, yeah. that's a good call. <laughs> so you're going to take half of this. Uh, so Talia and Drizzle, you guys take 16 points of fire damage. That is the half damage. Okay. As a <laughs> explosion of flame erupts. Next to the two, you manage you guys to, kind of, to like duck roll out of the way, but the flames kind of catch you as you take the damage. Oh, hot, 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 hot. And let's see. Uh, I don't. I don't like the heat like this. Uh, yeah, and he is going to disengage and run. 
disengages the... Ooh. It seems as though he casted his fireball very quickly. <sighs> Monster. I am irate. Hoo hoo funny quicken spell go burr. <laughs> quicken fireball. My day is ruined. I know, right? <laughs> That's why I said I'm irate. That sucks. <laughs> The guard is going to shift around and block your path, Seika. And he is going to stab at you with his spear. You don't want to do this, friend. Uh, that is going to be a 14 to hit you. That will miss. He goes to stab at you and you just kind of like backhand it with your monk-like reflexes. And that ends the enemy's turn. That brings us to... Seika, it is now your turn, as your prey manages to flee and hide behind the fire giant. Yeah, that's not going to work for me, so I'm going to go ahead and attack this gentleman in front of me. That's a that 21 hits. hit. Yeah, that cool. hits. 12 Small slashing damage. damage. Do you, you want me to roll the fire damage? <laughs> oh, no. You slash <laughs> this man down, and he crumbles to the ground. And I am instantly moving. You got it. You kind of twist around and he turns and he goes, fuck, as he's kind of like preparing another spell. As the sword comes up with me. And Hadouken. Is a 26 hit? That hits. Seven slashing damage. He's looking rough. And eight fire. Nice. Oh, that's four points. And yeah. with my free hand... See if this works. Seika brings his fist back and says, Tomare! And I'm punching forward with a stunning strike. Okay. Let Constitution me... saving throw, I believe. Find this. <gasps> thing. Stun. Where is it? Where is it on the sheet? Bonus action. Oh, where is it? Other. Ah, <laughs> yes, you can spend one key point to make the target stunned till the end of your next turn if it fails a con saving throw. All right, what's the DC? 14. Uh, that is a failure. That is a 12. Let's go! So he, he is, is stunned. stunned. <gasps> Pray. And I smell blood. actually, because I can't read, uh, that actually is technically off of the last attack. So oh, so he would I be... still have a bonus action. Okay, you got it. And I will uh, offhand with the sword. Yeah, with advantage, he is stunned. Get that advantage on there, and here we go. 20 to hit. 20 hits, yeah, and he can't use his reaction to cast shield. Uh, that is nine slashing damage. <sighs> yeah, he's looking, he's looking real rough. <laughs> Three fire damage. Nice. How do you want to kill him? Oh! Are you serious? Yes! <laughs> oh my he, gosh. Has a, he, he doesn't have a lot of health. Oh, so uh, as the stunning strike lands, Seika brings the blade back behind him and without saying a word but staring this creature directly in the eyes, he slashes horizontally in one clean move and sheathes his blade. He and then his... his head. Oh, yeah. His head just slides off and the body <laughs> crumbles to the ground. And the fire giant looks down and goes, hmm, so much for the glory of the sun and just brings down his boot onto the body. And it's just a big splat on the ground. Well, gee, I wanted to do that. Uh, and, and just as a free action, I'll just kind of shout in Drizzle's new uh, general direction. New target! You got it! Drizzle, go ahead for me and make a perception check. Sure. What do my Genasi eyes see? <laughs> Everything! Natural <laughs> level. 20. <laughs> Amazing. I'm just gonna clear out these guys because they are very dead. Oh, Drizzle, great. as you're okay. like, I got it. You hear like shuffling and moving coming from the sack. It's actually like moving around and, and like shifting. 
Wait, yeah. check the sack. Right here. Sack. Uh, sack. Kind of turns around and looks. Uh, what do I make out out of this? It's just a writhing sack. It's just a writhing burlap sack. Hmm. But you can deal with that on your turn, because right now it is Talia's turn. Oh boy. Okay. Um. You got this. <laughs> I believe in you. Let's we haven't see. tested Mark's affirmation yet. <laughs> I'm being a good team leader. For science. I'm delegating. Okay. Stows upon you the blessing of consistency. Yes. How about another 29? You seem to be good at rolling. Sorry, I'm just figuring out which one I'm going to use. No, no, you're all good. So, yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah. So I'm going to finally, she chants a little thing under her breath, and she is going to use one of her arcane shots. Okay. Um, and we're finally going to use Grasping Arrow. I don't know how to make it show up in the thing. <laughs> I have it, don't worry. Okay. When this arrow strikes its target, Conjuration Magic creates grasping poisonous brambles which wrap around the target. The creature hit by the arrow takes an extra 2d6 poison damage. Its speed is reduced by 10 feet, and it takes 2d6 slashing damage the first time on each of its... Um... On each of its... On each of its... Uh, the, each time... Okay. This is worded weird. And it takes 2d6 slashing damage the first time on each turn it moves one foot or more without teleporting. The target or any creature that can reach it can use its action to remove the brambles with a successful strength athletics check against your arcane shot DC. Otherwise, the brambles last for one minute or until you use this option again. Yes. So I think it's just a normal shot and then I roll the 2d6. Correct? Uh, when this arrow strikes a uh, target, this is the thing. Does it disappear? Does the effect disappear when you hit your target? That's the only thing I have about arcane archer that I'm not sure of. Um... One second. Check this. Uh, I'm I'm checking right now. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I I don't want to say yes or no because I'm not sure. Oh, it's it good lasts to up to one minute. This says for grasping arrow specific. Gotcha. So you choose when you succeed to do it. Actually, is what it says. So if you hit, then you can use it. Essentially, is what I'm seeing here. Oh, so or, I yeah. I activate it after I hit. You activate it after you hit, yes. <laughs> okay, that's weird. Sure. Um, <laughs> then let's go. 28. That hits. Good hit. Well then. <laughs> let's go. Well, then, there we go. 11, and then I'll roll the 2d6. 11 piercing damage. Uh, four for poison damage. All right, four points of poison damage. Let me just check something here. Yep, yep. He is, he is one of many few creatures that are not immune to poison damage. As you launch the arrow, it strikes this fire giant in the neck, and you watch just bursting forth from it just come these brambles, and he goes, what is this? As it begins to stick into him with barbs. Just a pre uh, precaution, friend. You're a Ooh, big you target, that but you're a big threat. Do you say that back to him in giant? Yes. <laughs> Actually, Whoa. let's flavor Fuck that. Yeah. Let's make that in giant. And then he kind of looks. His his look towards you is one of contempt. But the moment you speak giant, he kind of looks yours and curls his mouth and kind of smiles a little bit. And you see him nod and giant and go, "You'll be useful." <laughs> Her ears kind of like go back a little bit after hearing that, and she gets a little bit of color in her cheeks as she gets a little mad and she'll fire yet again. You got it. 22. Hey. 22 just hits. <laughs> there it is. Eight damage. Wow. Eight points of damage, not bad. And then she'll f go in for her final attack. 
You got it. And she'll charge this one up and let loose a 25. Hey! Let's go! Mob, yeah, that hits. <laughs> For another 10 damage. Yes. Nice! <laughs> Jesus Christ, bang, things come out. He turns, he goes, you'd be useful. And then immediately, bang, bang, two in his shoulder. And he goes, <sighs> useful to kill you. All right, and she your stands turn her ground. Live. She ends her turn. All right, Drizzle, it is now your turn. All right, you got this Drizzle for you. Would interacting with that sack be an action? Takes an action, yep. You got it. So, Drizzle loses all of his energy and kind of just saunters over. Hey, what was that noise? <laughs> right over what to the sack. Noise? And casually just tries to like unfurl it and open it up. Okay, as you unfurl it, just give me one second here. You open it up and just popping out their head is this man. Uh, he is chained up and disarmed, but he is in his armor. Uh, let's see. Here you go. Oh, hello there. Hello, oh, weird man. man. <laughs> a huh. rather large man with glittering, almost like blonde golden hair. Uh, he is chained and like locked incredibly. And as he pokes it, he goes, hello there. Oh, that seems like a problem. As he looks behind and sees the fire giant. Oh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a problem. But uh, what happened to you? Oh, you know, prisoner of war, all that stuff. You might want to uh, deal with that. He kind of juts his chin towards the fire giant that now sees you unwrapping it, and the fire giant goes, don't touch that, that is mine! I don't know, I think he's mine now. Turns his uh, sights oh, back. Oh, no, I can't be giant. yours, I'm already married. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe we can just still be friends. That'd be great, but um, don't die first. <laughs> that is your I action, won't. use of your bonus action and your movement. All right, let's see. What can I do? What can I do as a bonus action? Ooh. You knocked down uh, the giant's movement, didn't you? I sure did. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, uh, 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 never mind. All right. Well, I am going to touch uh, one of my swords. I think I'm going to go with Eb this time and give it a good old magic weapon blessing. You got it. Magic weapon, you got it. You imbue your magical... You imbue, you imbue the, the, the words. You imbue your blade with magic. The only one of your weapons can be done this way, but you have one of them, so... Sounds good to me. Um, and basically, I find an opportunity to, uh, hmm. How much bullshit would you let me get away with? Depends on the bullshit. I want to jump up onto the table. I'll allow it, yeah. I'll say acrobatics or athletics of your choice. Here we go! And then acrobatics. As I highlight everything on the page. Go, Drizzle, master of climbing and earth. <laughs> Not bad. Oh my God. Hey. You run and you're like, it's just like doing a dive and you just jump and you're on the table and you're like, yeah, I did it. You're on top of the table. Let's go, baby. It's a good sturdy table. It's a nice table. Stone. And I think from there I end my turn. All righty. That brings us up to the top of the turn on our cores. It is now your turn. You are reeling and you are sizzling from that previous attack from these shields. Looking to maintain his frenzy, he will shout aloud, He's already married! And will swing <laughs> He's angrily. already married! <laughs> uh, Monty, just double check and make sure that uh, the weird man is not blocking Oh yeah, uh, that's probably good if he wasn't. <laughs> Goodbye, weird man. <laughs> Goodbye, weird man. Bye, weird man. <laughs> uh, so that was a 19 to hit, unfortunately. Uh, 19, unfortunately, misses. You go to swing and you hit that large iron shield again, blocking your blow. Uh, swing again. Natural That's a crit. 20. Go! Let's fucking go! <laughs> Question, right. I don't know what type of barbarian you are. Do you have brutal critical? I yes, think you I do. do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Oh my god. And roll an oh. additional, roll an additional d10 for me, please. Sure thing. Okay. Two. Oh. 
13 plus... Hold on. Oh, that's 18. That's 23 total? Yeah, 13 plus... It's 28, so it's 13 plus... Oh, wait, I'm right. You're two-hand... You're two-handing this. Two-handing, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so... 12... Yeah, 19 points of damage plus two so. is 21 points of damage. 21. Holy shit. Yeah, that's Dance. a hit. Shields oh. are for blocking, not attacking. You hit the shield and you actually like, there's like an impact point, like a, like a sort of like a crater in the shield as like you hit one of the spikes and almost like, you know, whack-a-mole, like you whack the spike into the fire giant side, into the side of his body as he ah, buckles and he reaches down, he sees blood flowing from his body. That is a solid hit, but here, but I'm not done yet. You still have your frenzied attack if you wish to take yes, it. Yes, I will take it. Fortunately, unfortunately, it's a miss. Yeah, unfortunately, as you swing again, he like kicks you back with his boot, which is like this massive, now you see five foot tall, if not taller boot that you noticed earlier. Uh, that is his turn. It is now the enemy's turn. Uh... Be kind, rewind, Fire Giant. Yeah, he'll do that. Uh, Cores, you get an attack of opportunity as the Fire Giant repositions himself. Cores will take that attack of opportunity. Go for it. Rolling a 10. Oh. <laughs> that is a miss. Does the, do the, the vines don't uh, do anything? Yeah, vines activate, yes. So go ahead and roll damage for the vines. Okay. Is it another 2d6, I think? Uh, it is, yep, yeah, 2d6. Okay. Poison damage, right? Three points yeah. Of damage. Oh my gosh. You watch horrified, uh, Tilia, from your position as the fire giant takes the two shields and brings them together in front of him, making a giant wall. And at this point, you can see his back. Like, he is a musculature, very well-armored warrior with this, like, kind of red-haired ponytail running down his back. And as he brings both of these shields together like a steamroller, he then charges forward oh. towards you, Drizzle, and you, Seika. I need both it's of you so guys rude. to make strength saving throws for me. Strength, strength? saving throws. Yep. All right, plus two to this. Plus two. That is a uh. failure. It's a and 22 from Seika. That is a 22? That is a yeah. success. I have never had to roll a strength saving throw with him before. Woo. All right, but unfortunately for poor Drizzle, Seika, unfortunately I'll have to move you here. You manage to like jump front roll out of the way Dark Souls style as Drizzle and the fire giant. And you watch as Drizzle gets slammed into the wall with the spikes. Uh, Drizzle! Take... <laughs> to start. <coughs> damn it. God damn it. Sorry, one second. You're good. You're good. Take your time. Yeah, we're, we're in no rush for you to kill him. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know, I know. Are you sure? Yeah. Take your Alrighty. Time. <laughs> you take 22 points of bludgeoning damage. Got it. Oh, yeah, you, just take, you take 22 points of bludgeoning damage. That is what you take as it kind of pulls back the shield, and you just slide down the wall. Mm. <laughs> and that ends the fire giant's turn. What, that's it? That brings us to Seika. It is now your turn. Is you just nimbly dodge as you watch. Like, Drizzle is like, is like anime set, like hanging out in the crater on the wall right now. Do also, I? Also, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, you are also knocked prone, Drizzle, as well, as you fall to the ground. Sure thing. Also, I think that magic weapon was a concentration spell? Yes, so you will have to make a concentration check, which is half, so it's going to be 11 to pass. Plus two. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, thinking about Eb. 
Did we have any intel on the abilities of the giants? Nope. You know that they throw rocks. That was one thing you were told. He has not done that yet. Intel. Oh, they roll so... big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they may be giants. Uh, okay. So, I am... This is... What? Is this a... I think this is an action. Uh, nothing is where I'm used to things being. Yeah. We fear change. What? I should listen. <laughs> I have one use of burning hand as part it is, of my... It is an action. Oh, there it is. It's in spells. It is also a fire giant. I... Listen. All right, all right. I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> I don't know anything about them. I'm trying not to. Um. <laughs> uh, so it is an action. Okay. Uh. So then. So get it. Uh. I will once again uh, draw my blade. As I move, uh, is it possible to flank him? Yep. Is it is it exactly straight line only? So I'd have yeah, to be. You have table? to be. Like, yeah, you have to be on the table. Okay. Uh, then I, I'm pulling out my blade. I would say uh, you could go right here, though, with no issue. Right yet. here is fine? Yeah, right there is okay. fine. Okay, cool. Uh, pulling out the blade, once again uh, saying, Tsubasa, and igniting the, the, the blade once more. And uh, I'm going to cast Sword. Go ahead. 16, you strike against the back of his armor and take off no damage. I'm trying to test uh, his defense for weak points with a 20. 20 does not hit, unfortunately. I hate this. <laughs> Your worst enemy, Mark, a character with high AC. High AC, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Roll better, we've went over this. You know what? <laughs> uh, I, how are we friends? <laughs> you invited Zan, why are you mad? I know, I know. I was you like, hey. Mark. I hate because I love. Is someone you want to invite, Mark? And you were like, I want to invite my good friend, Zan, who's always my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate because I love. He knows. I love you. I don't love your roles. Ex yeah. <laughs> fair. Same. Mood. Okay. Uh, Listen, I've got him. I'm going to spend another key point. Uh, Two <laughs> flurry of blows. You got it. And my sword isn't getting purchased, so I'm actually going to use my fist this time, just in case. 18 will not hit. Miss, unfortunately. 19 will not hit. Miss. You bang against the shield and bang against the shield again. <laughs> I was hoping one of them might hit so I could maybe do a stunning fist. But I guess not. So it's, I suppose that's my turn. All right. As you I go bang, bang boy. against the fire giant, he looks down and he goes, <laughs> I'll have this one work the forges. That brings us to Talia. It is now your turn. Uh, would I be allowed to shout something out? Absolutely. Free action. Cool. can only be a sentence, really. You can't, like, have a whole conversation. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Talia will shout out to Seika. A genasi of your skill should make short work of this. I have faith in you, friend. As she tries to, like, psych him up, because he looks a little downtrodden, I'm assuming. Uh, <laughs> his uh, his never changing face looks a little sad, right? Now. <laughs> yes. I just imagine sad. you turn. You're like those theater masks, like the sad yeah. theater masks. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> me. <laughs> um. All right. Solemnness in his mask. <laughs> <laughs> Polyachi starts playing. We're gonna do what she does best. She's gonna shoot. All right. 18. 18. As you shoot it, clung, scatters across the shield. Mm, she readies again and shoots. 21. 21 misses. As a shield, another oh, no. shield just bang, breaks the arrow. Anyone know how to disarm? <laughs> she gets a little disgruntled. Ugh, third time's a charm, third time's a charm. 19 again. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, the three shots just psh, 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 just scatter across the armor, and the giant even like holds up the arm to kind of block the blow. She does not like him blocking it like that. She's gonna action surge. Okay. And, let's and go. And we're gonna try it again. <laughs> three more attacks. Let's go. Miss, oh, unfortunately. Oh, no. 21. Yes, oh, no. I'm oh, so sorry. <laughs> Come on, this one. You got she it. She moves one step closer because she's just <laughs> mad. <laughs> no, no. No. <laughs> no, I am so sorry. As you pepper oh. out more arrows, the giant just kind of laughs. And then giant says, once we have broken your arms, you will work translator for the courts. And he brings down the shields. That ends your turn, Talia. That does end my turn. It is now Drizzle, it is now your turn. You are prone and you're getting up off the ground, I'm assuming. And the neighbors turned on the fan at like nine at night. What, what's going on Woo! Here? All right. You need to cool off. Yeah, you're too hot. Uh, Drizzle picks himself up out of the crater. All right. oh. Half your movement. You, uh... Just peel away from the wall. All right. Oh, please never do that again. <laughs> 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 Let's get right what, to it. What, you don't like my immersive noises, Zan? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I just was not Squelch, expecting it. My favorite sound effect. So let's start with uh, my plus one ebb. And I'm going to swing at the giant. You got it. Here we go. I believe in you. You got this. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh, I rolled really severe, too. That's in that one. You go to swing and you slump back into being prone. <sighs> okay. Mm. Gonna attack from down here, I guess. You can get back up with the other half of your movement. It just means your movement's zero at the end of your turn. Okay. You know what? That's that's fine. Let's, let's pick yourself back up. And you bring yourself back up as you go to swing again. Maybe Flo will get this one. Whew. Plus two because of flanking. 18. You go to swing and you, ah, I got him. You hit his shield, unfortunately. Well, I certainly don't like that. All right. Just kind of take a minute to wipe my you face. You kind of gasp and breathe and the fire giant looks down to you and goes, and this one is too weak to do anything. I'll leave him here as a message for others. Cores, it is now your turn. Okay, he's gonna try and move up and swing at the thing. All best right. he can. Uh, worried about his friend uh, Drizzle over there. He's gonna try and just swing into the leg of the thing to get its attention. Plus two, unfor or no, no <sighs> plus two. No plus Misses, two, it's just unfortunately. Amazing. You swing and just pushing the shield in front of him, it just the shield just suddenly appears so fast and gong, you're hammer hits the shield and he kind of laughs a bit looking down towards you. What are you saying? And he can swing again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a <nine. laughs> What? <laughs> and um, last minute. Oh my. We're doing a nope. great job hitting a shield. Good yeah. round, guys. Yeah. Chung, chung, chung. That shield is uh... taking so much damage. And he's got two of them. He's got two shields. They, they have HP, right? But hate to do yeah. that shield. Am I right? <laughs> All right, that's Alrighty. my turn. It is now the enemy's turn. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that again. Drizzle, you get an attack of opportunity. You better believe I'm gonna take it. Come on, Eb. You got this. Oh. Nope. Ah. I need Seika and Kors to make me uh, strength saving throws, please. Okay. As he brings up the shields again and just starts rushing forward. Plus two. Oh. That's a success. Two, two. Oh, okay. 10. 27. That is a failure. This is going to hurt really Ooh. badly. Really badly. All right, Kors, you managed to jump out of the way as the fire giant and Seika. One second, I got to grab both of you. You get slammed into a wall, Seika. Don't you know? 
you take the... Take 20 points of bludgeoning damage. Ooh. Ow! And you are not prone. That is my first damage today. Yeah, he uh, hurts. Open it up with a spicy one. Yeah. Drop my poison damage? It does, yes. So go ahead hey. and poison damage. So five hits. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. Just, you know, a lot more of those and he'll be dead this in no is... time. <laughs> Uh, I know, I know it's, I know it's a little on topic, but this is the equivalent of like fighting a golem with a weedle, and you poison it and just wait for the poison damage to take him out. No, I... we got, this. we got this, guys. We got to stay strong. I'm so mad because I've rolled a couple twenty ones, and I'm like, oh yeah, those hit. Don't hit. What? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Fire giant dreadnoughts are fucking scary. Yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah, you would know, Willy. I hope you use these. They're really I sticky. love them. Alrighty. I know there's some probably some people screaming because the AC is slightly tweaked, but I just adjusted it to be more appropriate for the two shields because it's weird. It makes sense. Anyway. good. I'm having a blast. Yeah. I'm yeah. having Alrighty. fun. This guy is also a fucking general, so he's very strong. Anyway, he's that brings generally us to. A dick. Seika, it's now your turn as you are reeling from the blow and standing up, staggering. So it's half pro. movement to stand up, right? Yep. How tall is he? Uh, he is... Oh, that's a really great question, Mega Man. Let me go find out. Oh, hey, oh, oh, oh you too, Mega height. Man. They have a height chart for the giants, so... Where's my boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the boyfriend catalog is what someone called my monster manual once, and it's horrible, <laughs> and I don't like it, but it's funny. We might want to try and stack the flanking, because that plus two is going to be crucial. How many 19s and 20s once we've rolled? Mm -hmm. I just need to roll above a, a 15. Like Yeah, but if you flank, then you get to roll above a 13. <laughs> yeah, but that hasn't happened either. <laughs> Fair enough. There we go, giants. Uh, he is 18 feet tall. Cool. Um, I will use half of my movement to stand up. You got and it? And I'd, I'd like to use the rest of my movement to try and get on top of him and essentially grapple him, like, on his face. <laughs> yeah! You know what? I'll allow it. Okay. Hold his face you down. You bounce from the spikes on his shield one to one to one and do like a flip and you land on his face. What do you want to do with his face? Uh, I'm grappling him. I'm trying to All prevent right. him from moving. You grapple him, you grab onto his face and he tries to reach up, but the shields are blocking his ability to actually touch his face. Hey. Because they're so bulky. <laughs> Let's go. As you're grappling him, he is considered blinded because you are covering his face. Hell yeah. Amazing. Let's go. Um, Ooh, thank you for the repositioning. I think that that's an action, right? Grappling is an action. It is an action, yeah. But it but can it, it is mixed action. as it is mixed as part of your your attack action, though I believe. Unless I'm mistaken, I'm gonna let it be a part of the attack action. Fuck it, it's more fun. I, I have a bonus action still, right? You do. Go ahead. Okay, so I am going to. Uh, he's he's blinded, but. Is he considered having cover with those shields? Uh, where you are right now, he still gets the bonus to his AC because it's an armor thing, but... Well, th so the only reason I'm asking is because... Um, oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Never mind. doesn't matter. Cool. Uh, wait, don't, don't I get to do... I am so sorry. It has been several months since I've... I know, I know, character. I know, I know. I'm trying to remember all of it at one time. I, I do? could swear, yes, I do. Uh, Searing Arc Strike lets me... Oh, after the attack action. Damn it. All right. Uh, then I'll just punch him. Okay. <laughs> I'll punch. hand punch. With advantage, because he he's blinded. You're currently oh. blinding him. No, 19 I will, will not hit. I will say this. like 
you can't stop his movement from zero because he is two size categories larger than you, but because you are clinging to his face like a face hugger, he's blinded instead. Yeah. Oh, no, that. I'll take blinded. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, unfortunately, you go to punch him, but he's still wearing that helmet, and you just kind of hit the helmet and go, ah, kind of hit your knuckles. I am not used to this much armor. <laughs> That'll be my turn. All righty. That brings us All to right, Talia. It is now your turn with Drizzle to follow. All right. <sighs> Hmm. For those who are unaware, by the way, blinded means you have advantage on it. You do. Yeah. You have advantage on attacks against them. That's what I want. We'll just keep doing what we're doing. Yay. Doing it, doing it, doing it. Wow. <laughs> 20. You have advantage. You have advantage. You have advantage, yeah. So 22? That hits? No advantage. You don't get a oh. plus two. You get advantage. You yeah, you're not. You can't flank. You melee only. It only works for melee. <laughs> How about there that? There we go. Hey. Twenty-four <laughs> hits. Yep, twenty-four hits with the advantage. Purchase. Finally, I'll take it. <laughs> Seven damage. Nice. Seven damage. Not bad. As you, you as he's like trying to reach up to grab Seika, you like you shoot his finger, and he's like, Duff! as he's trying to like figure out how to get this thing off of his face. That's your first attack. All right, let's try for number two. With 27. Advantage. Go ahead, just in case you get a natural 20. Always roll with advantage. Okay. You never know. Okay. <laughs> 27. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that gets, gets the point across. Yeah, right. Go ahead and roll the, roll your damage. By the 12. way, F, FYI, on uh, D&D Beyond, if you hover over where it says Beyond 20, there's a little drop-down menu. You can actually select advantage, and it'll roll two dice for you. When you oh. Oh. Anyway. Go ahead. I didn't do that, but <laughs> with advantage, go ahead one more time. Oh, so... unfortunate. The last strike, unfortunately, <laughs> crashes against the shield, but you managed to get some pretty solid hits there. I'll take them. Honestly, you also missed take... Seika, which is really good. That's a, yeah, <laughs> I'm I... trying to avoid hitting my friends. <laughs> Ooh, ha -ha. The greatest thing in friendship, avoiding uh, each other's bills. Tilly, as you fire those arrows, you hear the weird guy to the south, you go, Good show! Hang on! And he's just kind of like bumping you guys up. <laughs> do you want to do something to help me? He's chained up! He's That's not support. my fault. <laughs> Alrighty. Tilly, you have your bonus action, your action. Anything else you'd like to do on your turn? I would like to run over to the mysterious weird man. Okay, you do. Is your owner he goes, hello. Hello. Your friends are crazy. I love it. We try our best. <laughs> crazy is a good thing in combat. <laughs> and she ends her turn. All righty. Drizzle, it is now your turn with Chorus to follow. Drizzle, what are you doing? So Drizzle is in a low stance. He is kind of swinging his sword, his hook sword, in like a readying motion. He's looking at the table. And let me tell you the plan here. Drizzle is going to run over to the table, leap onto the table, then run across the table, and then leap off the table, and then slam his swords into the giant. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Let's see. So I need to do acrobatics, you said? Jump. Acrobatics or athletics of your choice. Okay, yeah, you jump on top of the table. <sighs> and just goes in for a long winding run and then leaps. With advantage. Advantage on the acrobatics roll? No, advantage on the attack roll. Oh, excellent. Here we go. Yeah. I will say only one person can currently occupy the fire giant at a time. <laughs> I am fair. currently wearing the fire giant <laughs> as pants. Oh. Uh, you go to strike into the armor and you backflip off as you do not purchase through the thick iron armor. Uh, That's not your only attack. All right. All right. Pretty good. Pretty good. One more. One more. Let's that go. Hit. Hey. Hit. So, okay. With that good hit, you can almost hear a guitar twang as he slams <laughs> into it with a divine strike. Okay. Let's go. Third yep, level smiting. smite. Let's do it. So, let's see. Don't forget here. to do the normal damage as well. Yep. 
So six slashing and four radiant. Plus one because your magical weapons. So that's going to be 11. Now, let's see. How many dice is it at third level? I think it's... Oh, God, that's a good question. I should know this. So it's 2d8, 3d8, 4d8. 48, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, 48 points of damage. Go for it. I know we have our really cool boss theme by Ember Wick currently playing, but I just, in the back of my mind, I hear the... Sixteen points of damage. Holy shit. And I'm not done yet. You leap on the back and strike, and you're not done yet? What are you doing? Um, basically, as a bonus action for hitting that strike, I get to use my channel divinity here. Okay, yeah, your Oath of Glory. Uh, let's see, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? I lost it. I had it that on happens. a sheet here somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, sometimes the organization on this sheet is kind of like, under it what should be tab? under features and traits. Here we go. Channel Divinity. You're not going to tell me what that Channel Divinity is? Uh, oh, Inspiring Smite. There we go. Okay. Immediately after you deal damage to a creature with your Divine Smite feature, you can use your Channel Divinity as a bonus action and distribute temporary hit points to creatures of your choice within 30 feet of you, which can include you. The total number of temporary hit points equals 2d8 plus your level in this class. Divided right. among the chosen creatures, however you like. So go ahead and roll 2d8 plus uh, 11. Whoa. Here we go. So that's, that's... 26 total. All right. Hey, how, do you want to split... how do you want to split that? Uh, I'm going to definitely give 13 of those points over to uh, our rock star over there. All right, Kors, you get 13 temporary hit points. It is me. I am rock star. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Our hot spot is going to get another seven. Oh, All right. Lord. Is that me? And yep. I'm going to get the rest. All right. And those are temporary hit points. <coughs> All righty. I am temporarily bolstered. Does that, does that end your turn, Drizzle? <sighs> oh, I'm feeling glory tonight. As you leap on top of the back of the fire giant and drive your blade into it, Almost like an explosion of light bursts from his shoulder blades as he shakes you off. And that light kind of coalesces into ribbons in the sky like water. And then immediately comes into you, Seika, and you feel rejuvenated. And it comes into you, Kors, and you feel also rejuvenated. And to you as well, Drizzle. I feel rejuvenated in a way that's slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> Ew, gross sweat. All right. Me Kors, and me. Kors, it's now your tail. turn. I just watched the rejuvenation happening. <laughs> he can spit on you if you want to feel <gasps> <Okay. No. laughs> please is... no <laughs> does this count as flanking can I move here of course uh where sorry could you point it out can I move uh sorry right where he is now uh if you move here you'll be flanking okay then he, he will do that all right you flank with drizzle all right and rolling with advantage he will swing the war hammer just misses. I'm so 22. sorry. 22. Yeah. That, wait, 22. Does that hit? Oh, wait. 22 just hits. Yes. Hey, let's that's go. Bonus. That's right. Uh, I apologize. Unfortunately, only for seven damage. Seven damage. It's still damage. Yep. Swing it again. Oh, oh really bad. Uh, you probably still have your frenzied move. attack. You still have your yeah. frenzied attack. Oh, oh no. <laughs> unfortunate. Unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, pretty winded and beat up. He's going to just keep swinging it uh, as best as he can to try and get this guy's attention as he keeps beating up his friends. Um, and just shouting and raging unintelligibly at this point, and that'll be his turn. All right. It is now the enemy's turn. He lifts up his shield that he was... He's trying to reach up and grab Seika, and he can't reach because the armor is just too tight. You watch as he brings down his shield. He's going to make a fire shield attack against you, Kors. Is he still blinded? He is still blinded, so... It's really hey! Funny. His Achilles face. Uh, that's still going to be a 24. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Ew. No thanks. You take 25 points of damage, Oof. of bludgeoning damage, reduced in half to 12. Okay. 
and you take six points of fire damage. And as he brings down his shield on you, it actually hits the ground, and you see is there's a like a popping noise, and he drops the shield off of his arm, and he reaches oh. up to grab Yuseka. I want you to make a uh, I want you to make a competing athletics check against this fire giant for me, Ooh. as okay. he is attempting to grab you, and he does have advantage because he's bigger than you. <sighs> as well. That's a sixteen. Twenty two. He grabs you, just <laughs> grabs you. And I'm gonna roll a d6. One, two, three, four. Talia, you watch oh. as the fire giant takes Seika by the leg and just throws him like a rag doll towards you. <gasps> Can I use my reaction to deflect myself as a. <laughs> Actually, you know what happens? Because I rolled a natural one on the throw. Oh. oh. Yeah throws you, I hate to quote a, a movie that is questionably of quality, but you know Advent Children when Tifa gets thrown and oh, yeah. lands on the wall, like the side of the wall without taking any damage? As he throws you towards that wall, you just land on the side of the wall and you kind of jump down, but you are yeah. you, you land next to Talia. Hell yeah. As the fire giant like wipes his face and just <sighs> snarls. Oh. And you watch as the weird man in the cart goes, well that pissed him off, good job. <laughs> Slow turn. <laughs> well, hello I love there. combat. You young people have so much different, unique style. Come on, go crazy. You heard Don't him. Have to tell me twice. <laughs> you know, that Kors ends. is screaming loudly like a madman. <laughs> <laughs> that ends the fire giant's turn, and he has dropped his shield, so his AC has gone down. Oh. That brings us to Seika. It is now your turn. <sighs> Surrounded again. So now I can't do what I want to do. And that's okay. Because we're all working together to slay the beast. Mm -hmm. Uh, Where do I go? I guess I'll just go, I'll just sword his back out. <sighs> Try again. All right. Maybe this time I can hit him. Nope. 16. Miss. 17. Miss. Offhand attack. Miss. 14. I'm so <laughs> cool. sorry, Mark. I'll be over here if you need me. Talia, it is now your turn with Drizzle to follow. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> uh, she's going to move back over to kind of block the entranceway if needed. And... <gasps> We're gonna try shooting the giant again. All right, his AC is lower. Thirty natural. natural. Let's wow. Go. Let's go. Go ahead and roll damage. Well, she whispers to herself, "A little crazy, huh?" All right. Uh, twelve. And, then, yeah, double it. and six. Eighteen nice. points of damage. Not bad. As you, as he's like reaching to like <laughs> grab. Drizzle, you just strike through his hand. You see the arrow go through the back of his palm, through the front of his hand. It goes, Argh! and he looks towards you very angry. Would we also be able to make this an arcane shot? If you wish to, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Might as well, right? Okay, yep. so let's do a, da, 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 a piercing arrow. You got it. So it's an extra 1d6 piercing damage. Uh, they have to make a deck saving throw. Uh, use C15. transmutation magic to give your arrow an ethereal quality. When you use this option, you don't have you don't make an attack roll for the attack, and so the arrow shoots oh. forward in a line. No, never mind. Is... Then never mind. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't say that on mine. <laughs> yeah, you're doing piercing arrow, right? Yeah, it doesn't say that. That's yeah. So weird. Never yeah. mind. No worries. Does that we'll make just it keep its own it separate is, action, or it, it's its own separate action, and instead of to hit, it's a dexterity saving throw. That's some good stuff right there. It's so fine. basically I'll... it overlooks AC, which is kind of cool. I'll do it maybe for the last one if I miss the second shot. Um, all right, then I'll do my second attack. Go for it. 13. Wow. Yeah, that's a miss. All right, and then this one we'll use. We'll just use the, the piercing shot for this one. So You got it. So that's going to be a dexterity saving throw. Yes. DC 14? 
DC 14. Let me roll here. He's got to have low dex, right? I'm hoping he's giant. Something has to be his weak stat. <laughs> you just hear a whisper. Uh, so that is an 11. Hey. Ooh, he Ooh. failed. So he failed. So that is a failure. Uh, so he takes. Uh, the creature takes damage as if it were hit by the arrow. So go ahead and roll, roll arrow damage. Okay. Uh, plus an extra 1d6 damage. And nice. Then we'll roll the 1d6. So 11 plus. Five. 16 points of damage. Ooh, well done. He is looking very rough now. As the arrow breaks through his other shield and like goes into him, he goes, Ugh! he like leans over and just like the other's just blood draining down his face, kind of getting kind of snagged in his beard. And you hear the guy go, good shot. That was an excellent shot. <laughs> she blushes a little pink toned at that. She's very happy she hit. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Get a little crazy. Okay, okay. And she kind of like jumps a little bit up and down. She ends right. her turn. Drizzle, it is now your turn. All right. Let's go, oh, Drizzle. You and me. Let's do this. And I'm here too. Moral support. <laughs> you are giving the flake. <laughs> oh, I'm not done with you, hotspot. Don't Triangular worry. attack. <laughs> if we if we this form a nice regular triangle, this is advanced, <laughs> advanced flanking. Advanced flanking. If we make an isosceles triangle, do we get three? Oh my god, no! <laughs> we hey, kill him guy, with you dropped your door. <laughs> All right, Drizzle, what are you doing? I'm going in for the swing. Go for it. That hits. Yes. 25, nice. Nicely nice. done. Boom! Seven points of damage. And you know what? Just so that I don't waste this opportunity, I'll Divine Smite on that, too. Hey, go yeah, for it. Uh, Mark. Second level. Um, you got it. Divine Smite. So, go. 3d8. Eight. Hey, Another Drizzle, 12. how do you want to kill him? <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> yeah! Let's fucking go! <laughs> I hope you're all watching, here and at home. He kind of lunges back a little bit and then goes in for one final run and onto this uh, giant, bringing up both ebb and flow and slinging down both swords. You can almost, you, you almost think you can see like a giant wave splash forth from the arc of the blade as it cuts down through the helmet and through the breastplate. All right, as you swing your arms around, mastering the earth and leaping from the table, you bring down your sword and it feels short if it weren't for this lash of water that radiates out almost like a slicing, piercing strike, the helmet crashes next to you, Kors, as the fire giant's head is split open Part of the shield is just cut as if high pressure water has just seared through the rough iron armor. And as the giant staggers back, he falls backwards, stone cold and dead. Yep. And that's why I will- You are my friends! Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, you missed it. Oh, my bad. <laughs> you didn't hear anything. <laughs> and that's why the, you're my friend! And you're just- <laughs> <hugged>. <laughs> <laughs> he rubs his nose. Ah, <sighs> <laughs> oh, good job. I'd clap my hands if I weren't horribly chained and uh, manacled several places. It's good. Good show, everybody. Good show. No, great, <sighs> great. Uh, Talia runs over and starts to look at releasing the strange man. He is like chained up by like three different sets of chain, two different sets of rope, and his arms are manacled in two places. Oh, you didn't want him helping us. <laughs> <laughs> not me. Getting the distinct impression here. Uh, he was not an option. He actually, if you guys actually wanted to, you could have freed him and he would have picked up a spirit and helped you, but you guys didn't. And you know, that's, that's okay. I, I mean, he didn't enough. sound like he wanted to be involved. Yeah. In our defense, he wasn't a Ganassi. Yeah. True. Exactly. Wow. Okay. He's just a weird man. What are we? How I do just we know assumed we, we were keeping to yeah. a theme. He he sits up uh, and like I'm assuming you guys are letting him out of the bindings and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, we'll allow it. 
Yeah, with the aid, <laughs> you'll allow it. Oh, how thank you, how generous! <laughs> Truly, you are heroes of the the age. As you guys kind of take, you know, your sword and melt the chains, and you cut the rope, and you know, eventually get him out. He kind of, kind of fixes his, uh, you know, kind of rubs his wrist and goes, "Whoa, I'm gonna have back problems for a little bit while." Oh, where are my manners? My name is Captain Balfour Balton, leader of the Alavastian Army. Oh my goodness! And, Hello. Oh. Yes, and he kind of takes a big hand and he goes, "Oh, come here, you guys!" He just gives you a big hug, kind of brings you all, and he goes. <laughs> You all fight like an effective unit. Ah, if only our reinforcements fought as well as you did. Seika, kind of very awkwardly, not knowing how to respond to this motion, just sort of from his position in this big hug, just says, I believe we got your letter. Oh, that was for the recruit. That was for the reinforcements. Is that, is that you? Well, now I just feel silly. Yes, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> Our lady beating. Sally Andrus told me she was sending reinforcements. I wasn't expecting someone so windy and watery and crumbly and spicy. I can't let you, you get guys all, all go. The flavors, baby. It seems so, but I have you to thank. Had you not shown up when you did, I probably wouldn't have made it uh, out alive. They probably would have killed me. Those fire giants have been after my golden beard for quite a few years now. I have to thank you, and even more so. The less allies the fire giants have and the united clergy has, the better. You know, between you and me. In that light, I do regret to rush you out of this situation, but uh, I believe we should be getting you back to the forward camp. Oh, good to hear, good to hear. I, I, I need to find out what's happened to my army and, and my men and, well, the Griffin Riders, I know where they went off to, but... There is much to do. Oh, and I have to send a letter to my wife. I do miss my sweet smumblekins. All right, follow me. Oh, wait, here, let me, he kind of leans over and grabs both of the shirts. Ha, ah, dual wielding, let's go. And he makes his <laughs> way out the door. Should we do anything about that? And he kind of points towards the massive pile of armor. Well, I'm not gonna carry it. Kind of looks at cores. Oh, but I would collect the documentation if I were you. Lest that run into any unsavory hands. A fire giant general signature and the potential liaison of the United Clergy would be most unwise to have such information find other hands, allied or any enemy otherwise. Horus goes from picking up, trying to pick up the fire giant's massive hand, thinking that he needed to pick it up, hearing that, and then going to pick up the notes instead. <laughs> <laughs> There's Hold like a it one. I can't read this. <laughs> One comically large piece of parchment and then like a significantly smaller piece and you collect both of those. And it, it seems to be some sort of termed agreement in Giant for whatever agreement was supposed to happen. But as you guys make your way out to the rising sun, after making your way up the mountain, you see now that it is daytime. And as you make your way through the camp, eventually reaching the edge of the camp, the beautiful sunny sky shifts to a ominous amber hue as you look towards the sun and see a blackened eclipse. But with your mission complete and Balfour Balton and the army secured, you guys were successful in your mission. You guys managed to succeed. And because of that, the Alavastian army was not destroyed and Balfour Balton was not killed. We saved and Balfour Balton. That is where we will end the session for tonight. Good shit, guys. Uh, so he was right. the element of heart, right? He was. He yeah. Was heart all along. <laughs> he, moment, we knew it. The moment I you knew guys it. Were like, we're like, oh, we're Captain Planet. I'm just like, <laughs> bye, Austin. Bye, Austin. Bye, Austin. Bye, Austin. Take care. Don't oh forget to save goodness. your audio. And I'll tell you guys where to send it after we are done. I was definitely not expecting that we were rescuing both. So about. if you guys wouldn't mind listening it as unexpectable as 193, that would be amazing. Sure. Okay. Because yes, this is technically an official episode as it is a bit of a side story, but it is official content. So good Crystal shit, with the clutch guys. damage on that end. Oh, yeah. Dude, <laughs> that was the, beautiful. The, <laughs> the, the, the last two turns from from uh, our our I guess pin cannon and uh, hook blade warrior. 
I don't know. I tried to make it sound fancy, but my brain exploded half. <laughs> Drizzle and Talia were DPS central for yeah, sure. They were yeah, disgusting. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to do is to shoot. So, and Marie, <laughs> thank you, thank you for letting me try and, and do some technical stuff. Oh yeah, that was. I, I was, was like, like I'm not doing I'm like, any damage you, in this fight. <laughs> you can't, you can't grapple a giant to zero movement. But I'm like, but you are clinging to its face, so you can blind him. That would be great. Yeah, like I love creative. Awesome. I you. love creative stuff like that, and I'll always try and find a way to like, unless it's like, oh, I I stab him for like a billion damage. It's like no, no, no. But it's like <laughs> I want to do a fun thing. What happens? And it's like, all right, we'll figure out something where it you know works really, really well. And that was extremely show, useful, though, because, like, we yeah. weren't hitting... I mean, I attacked six times in a row and didn't hit him, so it was just right. like, mm, yeah. <laughs> just that one round of advantage, I think, was Hitting six times and helpful. missing, what's that like? So, so what I did for the... <laughs> hitting, what's that like? <laughs> so I just want to clarify something before people are like, what the Fire Giant say? So Fire Giant Dreadnoughts technically have 21 AC, but I gave it 22, so it has 2 AC for each shield it wields. So basically, if you remove both shields, it has an 18 base AC, and then with each shield, it has a plus 2. So that's kind of what I did. Mm. I was looking up the creature, and a lot of people recommended doing that, so I'm like, I'll give this a try. Oh, it was a good fight. Yeah. Yeah. No? yeah. yeah. It was... And and I my compliments on on it being scary but not impossible. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. No, his his ability to just charge through people was really stinky, um, and especially in that enclosed space made it very scary. It was like mm -hmm. a good cluster. Jared, when I when saw I the you... token, I was just like, oh no, not this bitch again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're cool though. Dreadnoughts are cool. <laughs> They're also um because I was I was torn between doing just like a fire giant and like and then like have the United Clergy side of things be really, really, really strong. Um, but like I know, I know that you only gain one benefit from a shield, but this is literally a warrior designed with two shields in mind. So which is why I gave it double the double thing. Why I thought are that you acknowledging no Bosco? Because he stinks and I can't ignore it. Anyway. Um, but like, I was torn. I'm like, do I, should it be a dreadnought at this meeting or should it be just a standard fire giant? And then I was like, and I was reading up on dreadnoughts and it's just like, oh, they go to meetings. And I'm like, oh, yeah, then we're sending yeah. a dreadnought. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. I, I think it was appropriate that you made both dark souls and shadow of the Colossus reference. Cause it had that kind of weight to it. I love shadow of the Colossus, man. Wow. All right. Well, we'll switch over to the slideshow. We saved um, Ball for Bolton. You did, yes. That was like that was that and the army were the two major things. If had you guys failed, um, then Ball for Bolton would have died, which is pretty rough. And then the army would have lost significant numbers. Look, we can we can lose the army. That's fine. I'm okay with it. But you can't lose Ball. <laughs> Come on, his hair no, is beautiful. He, he's so happy. Literally, I, like people are getting the shit beat out of him, and he's just like, "Hello, friends. How are you I doing, know, guys?" Whoa, yeah, I don't crazy. want to know what happens to his wife if anything happens to him. That's what, like, that's a good I don't point. want to be the reason for that. <laughs> you know? No, Mark, you personally must roleplay the bereavement. I would have. <laughs> I would have. Don't underestimate uh, my dedication to being bad at this game. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we exit out for the night, and we are ending really late, uh, would you guys like to, we can do an outro here. Uh, yeah. Mark. Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at Mark Allen Jr. Here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming. And you can find my fat cat bunny on Instagram at Chonk Life. Uh, I am not going to be doing a uh, Soul Lock stream with Therapod on Thursday. That's tomorrow or today, depending on what time zone you're in. Uh, just because I've got a lot of stuff going on. But we are doing a rain check for Sunday. So our Pokemon soul lock adventure will continue on sunday uh so check out my twitch his twitch and yeah next week uh look forward to a very big announcement on my twitter i'm very excited and look forward to sharing with you other than yeah. that uh thanks so much for having me back yeah seika's last hurrah paying back the debts i appreciate both the opportunity and the uh the enthusiasm from the so you guys were so kind to me the last time I was here and just seeing everybody be excited to have me back. Yeah. Very heartwarming. So thank you very much. Speaking of heartwarming, uh, Cheru, where can everyone find you? Hi, guys. I'm Colonel Cheru. You can find me over at Colonel Cheru on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok. 
I don't know, whatever it is out there, I use that username, you can find me there. Um, if you like the D&D content that I put out today with me shooting things, I also slice things on Thursdays as Cricket on the Shazoo cast over on my channel, uh, along with Willie, who's the DM there. So <laughs> <laughs> we also have uh, Connor and Gaijin who also join us for that one as well. So hey, we know those a lot guys. Of fun. We do know those guys. Um, but yeah, you might recognize me from the Discord server because I help run the Unexpectables Discord server. And you swing a heavy hammer. I, 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 not sometimes. actually, not that much, which is good. It's very rare. Everyone's very well behaved in that server. It's very nice. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, thanks for having me on. It was a blast. I loved every second of it. It was fun playing with you guys, too. It was nice meeting um, you, Mark, and Zan. So. Yeah, you too. It was a pleasure playing with all of you as well. Speaking of people, Sheru knows Willie. Well, nice you segue. can find the Willy <laughs> Thank Boo you. at the Willy Boo. Fun posting online and bring in the brine, baby. Yeah, nailed it. Water puns. <laughs> yep. Uh, you can find me usually on Twitter. Uh, fun posting a little bit whenever I feel like it. You can find my stuff on the DMs Guild. My name is Willie Abiel. That's with a Y, not an I E. And you can also check out MCDM's Arcadia Magazine. Um, I've got an article in issue one, issue four, and another one coming out in March. And Zan, where can people find you? Ah, yes. Uh, you could find me at Zan Zanny Grimm, uh, under the Twitter handle Zanals Grimm. Uh, occasionally, I DM online for random guest areas. If you are particularly interested, I tend to share that information out on Twitter. But aside from that, you'll probably have to just hunt me down like the dog I am, if you want to find me. With yeah. flashlights and everything. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I mean, yeah, you gotta have dark vision. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and you guys know me, I'm Monty Glue. You can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter and twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Tomorrow, maybe some more Dungeon the Mad Mage, and then Sunday stream, maybe. I don't know, I'm shrugging, I don't know. Things are kind of all up in the air because we have our next one shot coming up. Um, the next one shot, barring any circumstances, it will be the Mercs, the return of the Mercs. Uh, they are in quite possibly an extremely precarious situation as they are still inside of the city after its occupation. So. Thanks. Uh, you, you guys, luck, yeah, the Mercs are going to be back on the scene with their mission, and they have a fourth in their group who is not Remy. They actually have a new hire who's joined the Mercs, so if you want to find out who that is, definitely check that out, and uh, yeah. And speaking of uh, cool things... Wait, real I'm quick, not gonna... before you do that, uh, can I make do one more thing? I'm so sorry. But my dice, Mark, just hurry! Just, it's ready to action. <laughs> okay, uh, I totally forgot. It slipped my mind because we'd rescheduled it because sick. Uh, I'm going to be doing a co-stream with my friend Azul J on Monday. They are going to be playing through Spyro, uh, and I'm going to be providing some color commentary. Mostly going to be making fun of Bosco if we can find him. Uh, check them out on Twitch, Azul J, A Z U L J. We'll be doing that on Monday. Um, check Twitter. I'll have more announcements for that later in the week. Thanks. Hey, Monty. Uh, I really like the sound of your dice. Where did you uh -huh. get them? Oh, I got them at this wonderful site called dieharddice.com. Diehard Dice! Wow. And you know what? They don't only sell dice, they also sell dice accessories, such as rolling trays and uh, dice towers and other cool, fun things that you can get. And you know what? Zan, if you really want some cool, super heckin' awesome dice, I you do. can use the uh, code UNEXPECTABLES exclamation mark to save 10% uh, when you buy at dieharddice.com. By doing so, you get some cool dice, you support the show, and you make it so Diana likes us. <laughs> Wowzers. Hey, that Diana, like we love you. Great deal. It I think like I'm going to go great. buy some right now. I, I already bought it. mine. Yeah. Thanks, not... Die Hard Dice. Which which ones did you get? Do you remember which ones they are? Yeah, I have the uh, uh, something Phoenix. Ooh, <laughs> oh, Phoenix <laughs> yeah. dice. Yeah, they're uh, oh gosh, I wish I could remember. I don't. I they have Phoenix in their name. Go Google it. They or, do. Or, it's or, awesome. Do, they're great. You know what? You know what? DieHardDice.com has it has a search bar where you can put Phoenix in. And, it and, does you know. have that. Yes. It does. 
I'm anyway, so that's fine. You're totally fine. Uh, I'm gonna read Spellbinder some bits and Phoenix. Subs. There we go, Spellbinder got Phoenix. It. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna read some bits and subs. I don't know if I, uh, I I'm gonna miss stuff. Um, I'm gonna try my best. If I end up missing you, I'm very sorry, but uh, this is my first time doing this, and I, there's just bound to be mistakes. Um, uh, Kuro Okami, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 16 months. Thanks to Robo Mom for my gift sub. Uh, and Super Choco Devil, thank you so much for gifting a bunch of subs to the community. Thank you very, very much for that, which is super, super cool. Dip and Bipples, thank you so much for the tier one sub for six months. Hi, Monty. Hi, Dip and Bipples. <laughs> Oz195, thank you so much for the Prime sub for 21 months. Who asked, who is the Drizzle? Uh, they are a murderer and a, uh, you know, a slayer of fire giants. And a Spe hero. And the a Drizzle. hero. And just Spence a dandy guy. <laughs> Spencer Taylor, uh, 182. They used to the tier one sub for 19 months in a row for 21 years. Uh, 21 years. Oh, my God. 21 months total. <laughs> oh, my God. Panic and Remy, play-by-play -play in the Discord. <laughs> yeah, actually, the main cast have been hanging around for these games to see what happens in them because of what your guys' actions do will affect things um, with Alabast. You're welcome. Uh, they Super said they had no faith in us. I'm a little... Guys. Wow. wow. They, they mostly uh, just said, don't fuck it up. So... <laughs> Super Choco, more. Super Choco Devil, thank you for gifting more subs. Zach Odu, thank you for gifting a tier one subs too. Consistency is key. Good. <laughs> Imagine that happened True. during the fight. Uh, mm -hmm. Emerald Bandit, thank you so much for gifting subs as well. Very appreciate. Cubia Alpha, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 21 runs in a row with 21 total. Oh, snap. 20 win. 20 win. Death the Kid, thank you so much for the tier one sub for eight months. Whack. Dinoc9, thank you so much for the resubscribe for seven months. Miss Tweedums, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Sir B for one month. Nakoon Parade, thank you for so much for the tier one sub. Cup of Squid, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub for 20 months. Dude the Man, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 19 months. My Kinky Wizard died. I can't believe this happened to me. The only thing that could console me would be a gift subs in the chat room. Oh no. <laughs> like Tabuya, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to AP Sol for six months. Raptor Strike 88, thank you for gifting a tier one sub. Uh, thank you for resubbing for a tier one. The, 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 I cannot read bird words at all. I almost said birds. Uh, thank you for resubbing for two months. Two months. Yee. Caffeinated Conquest, thank you so much for the rating party of eight. Nakoon Parade, thank you so much for 100 bits. I love my Earth Dad. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get him a t shirt, like a whole shirt. Also, we do need a name for this episode. Like Tabuya, thank you so much for 100 bits. Mm -hmm. Clear as mub. <laughs> uh, Wolven the Six, thank you so much for the uh, 100 bits. Title suggestion, Seika Sentai. Oh. Uh, Blackfoot Ferret, thank you so much for the 420 bits. The Bee Dragon Puncher lives to, to lives another day, exactly. He's not dead <laughs> until he fights that Bee Dragon. I have one, I have one. With our elements combined. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty mm. good. That's actually extremely good. Can you write that down? Yeah. Yeah, just type it in the chat. Uh, jokingly, got to pitch go crazy, but... <laughs> kind of like by our elements combined no no that's really good it's much better it's really it's really good yeah uh bubba bob thank you so much for five more bits uh title suggestion putting out the fire the uh adam the adam bomb thank you so much for the 20 bits fantastic caleb thank you so much for the 50 bits i am spite thank you so much for the 400 bits congratulations seika squad you made your dinky proud like I Tabuya, am the dinky thank you now. <laughs> I am the dinky now. <laughs> like Tabuya, thank you so much for 100 bits. Element of surprise. That's also not bad. I do like by our elements combined, though. Bubba Bob 145, thank you so much for 100 bits. Can't wait for the fan art. It's going to be all Captain Planet, Super Sentai, and hopefully some Sailor Moon. Oh, Get hell some Common yeah. Rider in there, too. Right? Oh, yes, okay. please. I... Ellie Kit. Yeah. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie Kit, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Now I want a full campaign with these four characters. This always happens when I do one offs. Everyone's like, <laughs> we want a full campaign of this. And it's like, listen, until someone makes a robot that can cook me meals and clean my house, I will do that. But I can't because I have to also eat, sleep, and, and poop and do normal human things at normal human times. Uh, like Tabuya, thank you so much for the 80 bits. Oh, God. Uh, and. B -b 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 Fantastic, Caleb, making social 100 bits. It's bittersweet having you say goodbye to Seika again. This time, a final farewell. Mark, thank you for playing one of my favorite D&D &D characters. It's always a pleasure, and thank you, everyone, for such a fun session with amazing, fun characters. Yeah, thank you guys for coming and doing this. Yeah, thank you for having us. It's yeah, so, thank you for hosting. Yeah. This was yeah. fun. Yeah. Thanks Hell for inviting yeah. me. Miss Lunar Bane, thank you so much for the tier one sub for 22 months. Whoop, whoop. Zito, 
hey, we know that guy. You fucker. I hate you so much. <laughs> you have Hunter to read bits, it, Monty. <laughs> Dippin' Bipples. Uh, thank you for the additional 400 bits. Dippin' Bipples. Gotta say wait, it. Dip, wait, dip, Diplin' Bibbles is what he said that time. <laughs> Uh, fantastic, Callum. They get searched for fifty bits. GTG Maximo. They get searched for hundred bits. Saw a title suggestion earlier. Element of surprise. Yeah, I just read that one off. Three hundred bits from Zenlita. Episode title: Putting out fires. And a hundred bits from Bubba Bob. Blippin Dipples. You guys are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Who would we like to raid? That's the the real question of the hour. That's the million dollar question. Yeah, yeah I. I have Therapod on. <clears throat> yeah, he's the only one on my friend. I have oh, a Oh, the lot, Unexpectables are playing. Therapod oh. is... <laughs> I suggest Therapod as well. Yeah, he's only got 15 viewers. All right, we're going to send you guys to Therapod. Do not spoil anything, all right? <clears throat> yeah, no spoilers. no spoilers. No spoilers. So I'll spoilers. come and ban you, maybe-ish. Threaten, threaten, threaten. <laughs> what, what should the raid, hey. mes uh, raid message be? Yeah, what should the raid message be? Boom, baby. Dippin' Bibbles. <laughs> Dip, yes. No. God damn it. <laughs> We've done that before. Have you? Yeah, we'll do it again. Dippin' Bibbles. How about, uh, here's a good uh, suggestion. Oh. Go crazy. Go cra Yeah, go crazy. Let's do that. Go crazy. I like that raid message. It's one we haven't done before. And it's, it's thematic. But yes, no spoilers. Take care, everybody. And see you next week for the Mercs. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye now. Ha, 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 ha,